I don't know why the panic of others gives me comfort, you know, or seeing someone scared makes me happy, like yeah. super nervous. So the same me. thing that calms Jeffrey Dahmer calms you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Hundred percent. Smoking cannabis doesn't have to hurt. For the smoothest and coldest experience, you need a freezeable pipe bubbler, bong, or dab rig from Freeze Pipe. Each piece comes equipped with a freezeable glycerin chamber that cools smoke by over 300 degrees. With just an hour freeze, you'll enjoy bigger clouds without any of the chest burn, throat pain, or coughing attacks. It's time to fight fire with ice and smoke like royalty without paying a king's ransom. Shop today at thefreezepipe.com and use the code BEARS for 10% off. That's thefreezepipe.com and 10% off with the code BEARS. Shop today and say goodbye to harsh smoke forever. Good news. Bert's not here. <laughs> <laughs> He's still alive, though, right? He is alive. <laughs> it's a bummer. But so great to welcome Giannis Powers back to the show. Thank you for coming. Thanks Thank for you having very much. me. Yeah. I, I didn't tell you this, but I'll tell you now. I fucking regularly, like, because I, like a lot of people, I waste my life many times scrolling Instagram. And your clips from your shit, I watch almost every single one. Oh, it's, thanks, yeah, man. you're so good at your show. And there's people because there's there's comedians that I feel like you know now now having a podcast like having a website, you're like you know <laughs> you have to you know what are you doing? Um, but then there's people you're like oh no no you shouldn't have one like you, you, the skill set doesn't translate for yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Like there's <laughs> awful podcasters. Some of them are very successful at stand up, and you're like you watch them podcast and you're like wow you're dog shit right. as a podcaster. <laughs> And then, and then there's great podcasters and you watch them on stage, but like you translate, like you, you're able, you're one of the few guys. I think the hardest thing is to fucking sit at a mic by yourself and you can just talk. I've I tried that once and I was like, never do this again. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not, it's not for everyone. No, it takes a second. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure I've had some episodes that are just dog shit, but yeah, the more you do, the better you get. And uh, yeah, we're totally at peak podcast. I had the, um. I had my, I got scammed into cleaning my water. I don't even know what that cleaning means. your water. Yeah, like I'm. I live my whole life in New York City and Brooklyn, and now I live in the country. And these all these new things I'm learning about. And some guy comes by. He's like, "Your water is hard." He's oh like, you yeah, you need soften to, it. You got soft, yeah, soft water. And me being like from New York, I was like, "What do you mean?" Yeah, I got to soften my. I thought water. Can it get softer than water? Yeah, like if someone splashes water on you, like that's the soft. Have you felt soft water? So I have soft water at my house, yeah. and it makes you feel like, like there's like a guy's coming on. Like there's just, <laughs> it's just twenty guys jizzing on you. It's all luby, and you're like, you feel like you're still wet, and you're like, Ugh. and that's that's considered. So I didn't know what that was. That's so you didn't first. know either. I got in, and actually, I think it was Bert came. He stayed at, um, he stayed over, and he was like, oh, you got soft water. I thought he meant pressure. <laughs> I was like, we could dial it up. I yeah. thought he was like criticized. I took it personally. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, no, no, you have soft water. And he was right. Like you feel like there's, uh, you know what you feel? You feel like there's still soap on you. That's what it feels like. You're like, oh, there's still, yeah. that, that's soft water. I'm I like, just kept washing and washing yeah, and, and wash, like, trying to get it off and then rinsing and rinsing and rinsing trying so to get hard, it off. Hot, hard water just feels like. Hard water feels like it's cleaning you better. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm getting out of the shower. So and now I'm, you got soft water. You're like, I want the hard water yeah, back. Yeah, I want the hard water back, dude. Yeah. I want that gangster water back. I don't want this, like, blue yeah. collar water. This I mean, the white ass collar. poly by water. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want this prep school water. This trans ass water. <laughs> I want the real shit. I want this real hardcore public school, you know? Yeah. Nobody's getting busted into that school water. Yeah. Yeah. I want ghetto water. Sure. And uh, yeah, but anyway, the guy comes. So I guess there's I, no way they're going to the projects being like, you guys, water's hard. Yeah. <laughs> You guys want to soften the water up? Yeah, they're not doing it. They're not. Because yeah. I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking? Why are you yeah. calling my water soft? Why are you my <laughs> no, we want hard water, you, man. You don't know who my water is. My water Wagner comes from. houses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, you know, I guess it is. So it's a real thing is what you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait, so how did they know that you had hard water? Because you're I, like, did you shower when I wasn't here? How do you fucking know? <laughs> right. I was like, how do you know? He's like, he tested, he pulled, he came out with like, uh, uh, a test thing and it was like purple as if I know what that means he's like oh your water's got too much titanium or whatever it is in there sulfur I don't know what element I didn't even I thought water was just H2O I didn't know there was other things in there but he's like yeah well water there's other stuff in there so you need that 
I was skeptical, told him no a bunch, then finally said yeah, because he said there was a risk of pin pinhole um oh, leaks like in the pipes. Oh, pinhole leaks in the pipes. Oh, okay. So he did it. And then he comes back to check, just talking about peak podcasts and how many podcasts there are and some people not being good at it. And then he goes, he comes and he checks it. He shows me how to change it, which I didn't pay attention to. I was just like, I'll just call you when I need to fix it. Yeah. And then he goes, uh, do you mind if I, uh, you mind if I um, do a little content? And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, you know, my boss is 65. He doesn't get it. He's like, you know, I got a, a water podcast. And, uh, and I was like, what? And he was like, you mind if I just get interview a little, I'll cut it into the podcast if I just interview you real quick and you just talk about like what it looks like, what you learned. And I was like, first of all, I wasn't paying attention to one word you said yeah. when you were teaching me what to do it. Second of all, I'm not going to be on your podcast. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm but guess paying. what, pal? You're yeah. on this podcast <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> there you go. Gonna... And then he did a story and then he did an interview with me like, it was crazy. And he's going, here we go. Another satisfied no customer. No way. He's going right there. You see the bypass valves going. And then he's turning to me and I'm like trying to get out of frame. I'm like, I don't want to be on, you know, Mick Volick and company, water company podcast. The water flow pod. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. so funny. You know, I think I, I've established, I have established this, I guess I didn't realize it, almost public persona where people who want to talk to me look at me and then they're like, I guess not. Like I I, <laughs> I I I look at people like don't you fucking dare, <laughs> and they they usually start talking to me. They're like, I know you don't like to meet people. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you've been paying attention. That's cool. Yeah, I'm not into it either. I'm, I'm not good at I it. I don't. Know I think what that I say. know I'm not good at it. And I I guess it, maybe it's just a, a honestly maybe it's just if I can be completely honest maybe it's just a huge insecurity where I feel like. It's a, this is not going to be what you want it to be. Right. So I just shut it down before it happens. Right. You know? Right, right. So you just, you're basically telling them, like, I'm not gregarious in this situation. Uh, yeah. It's Whatever gonna, you think this is going to be, it's, it's not. Gonna not be. Yeah. So let's not start. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what do you usually do, like, when someone approaches you, I'm a fan? You just fake it. You go, thanks, man. No, I always am nice. Yeah. I am always nice. I, and people go, and, and I get asked, um, can I do a picture? They go, I, they start, they go, I know you don't want to do this. Right. But do you, I go, of course, yeah. take a picture. I guess what I hate is chit chat. You know, yeah. I hate chit chat. Yeah. I hate like, hey, so uh, do you like it here? I'm like, at the hotel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's nice. And they're like, yeah, you know, they have a place on the roof. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm staying here. I saw it. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> You know, uh, my cousin saw your show in Spokane, and I'm like, cool. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. And like that shit, where I'm like, yeah. I just rather get to, uh, you know, I just have it, I like it quick. Yeah. And I'm, but I always look, I've, I've signed anything anyone wants me to sign. I've never said no to a photograph. I've never said no to like saying hello. I'm not like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I just genuinely get uncomfortable at awkward, small, chat right the small you know? chat just seems like it's uh yeah i'm just like uh yeah yeah i don't know it's weird it's like hey man i'm a fan and that's good here's a pick and that then i think i also see like we're not gonna hang out no yeah we're not like what are you doing when they're what are you doing after uh, yeah. then i'll go like come on <laughs> come on uh but like i see someone like you know because i'm so close to bert i see his like he's like a guy that's running for fucking mayor yeah you know so he walks in and he's like hey guys like to like a to a room and i'm like oh my god you know and he just like takes it he embraces it and i'm just more like you know yeah that's that, that makes sense with your two personalities yeah i mean when we go out together i'm always the whole time i'm like this because <laughs> he like he walks into restaurants hey i sent over a double tito's like he'll do he'll do that like across a restaurant where i'm like <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah you know i guess he I, crowd surfs he just crowd surfs even when he's not crowd surfing totally yeah 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 he's just like a dude like hey can, hey hey bird i love you and he just will try to get on the guy you know, totally. like, okay this, no i've always said i love attention when i'm on stage right and i can have none when i'm off stage and be perfectly content right perfectly content i feel the same way i'm yeah. very awkward off stage yeah like uh when when someone comes up to me but i i sway a lot people, i start sweating yeah. so you know yeah. people 
sometimes interpret that as like, oh, you're mean or you're a terror. No, it's just you're just uncomfortable. Right. I'm not like, I'm not actually a dick to people um, in those situations. I'm just literally am like, I'm, like I don't know what to do. I'd ra- I'd really like this to wrap up so I could keep walking. Yeah. 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 There's you know? kind of two types of comedians, right? There's like that extreme extrovert. Yeah. And then the strangely kind of shy in private, but then you're only an extrovert with a microphone yeah you're introverted in any every other situation so you're like that too i'm very much like that my first time on stage i had a massive panic attack like i had to i've had to work through uh social anxiety to get to perform so first time i got on stage i remember my arms just went numb and i just kept repeating thank you because i forgot my act i was so nervous i just kept going thank you thank you (laughs) thank you you're like, Thank you. You're like this guy's on the spectrum. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I heard that first laugh from the amount of thank yous for some reason that made them laugh, yeah. it just relaxed me. Uh, that's always. And it. then I did my shitty five minutes. Yeah. The laugh because I also couldn't. People think that comedians can all do uh, public speaking well, and you're like, if there's laughter involved, yeah, serious public speaking is terrible. I mean, I got asked to speak at a wedding. Yeah. Not at the, I'm talking about during the ceremony to read from the, dude, I had the lump in my throat. I, like I was, heart was racing. I had to like say a line from the Bible, look up and, and look at, <laughs> give the audience a look and they laughed. Yeah. And then I was able to read the rest of the passage. Right. I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it without a beat of comedy. I had to yeah. just to be able to breathe. Right. I felt like I was on the verge of being like, I'm sorry, yeah. I can't do this. That's you know? interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I gave speeches at funerals and I just cried the whole time. Yeah. I couldn't get through it. I was just, like, <laughs> I yeah. was like a, you know, a kid. It yeah. Was, I couldn't get through it. Yeah. I spoke at my we father's. We hide behind comedy, don't we? Oh, a, th- a yeah. thousand percent. I yeah. spoke at my father's memorial service. And shit on my mother, and that was what made me <laughs> get through get it. Through. <laughs> I, dude, at my father's memorial, and my cousin had just spoken, and he was crying about my dad, and I was like, "Look, um, for sure, my dad is in heaven right now. Um, I think anyone he that spends fifteen minutes with my mother, let alone forty five years, <laughs> deserves to go to heaven." You know, and like, and they all, everyone started. Laughing. My mom was like. <laughs> like flicking me off <laughs> but it it made people laugh yeah. and then i was able to speak without like having a nervous breakdown you know yeah. i actually was like pretty emotionally disconnected because i didn't want to break down right in front of everybody right but like shitting on her and getting a laugh like made it possible yeah yeah she was probably not happy about it but you're like hey you know listen funny? i had to get through this she would like later on i was like hey about that she was like i have no recollection of anything that happened at that Wow. She didn't remember any of it. So like, she not was, just me, any of it. The whole memorial service. Because she was like mourning. In another space. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was like, oh, she goes, what did you say? I was like, oh, forget it. It wasn't that big. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find as like comedians, we're just constantly having to apologize to family members, friends, people. And yeah. then we're just like, I'm sorry. Like you try to, if you're telling a joke about a family member, you'll try your best You'll be like, I had, there's this person I know who's also uh, calls my parents, parents. Um, you try to yeah, disguise to like, it. Disguise, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've, yeah, there's so many apologies. And like, I think now too, though, they just kind of go like, you know, after years, they're like, oh yeah, you're doing this. Right. This isn't like when you first start and you're like, is this, you know, they're, what the fuck are you doing? Like now they're like, oh no, you literally, dude, my mother called me and she goes, she goes, uh, you know, who, who knows how long I will live, but uh, I'm sure you'll be happy when I die because you can talk about it. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, what? And she goes, you can do your thing. You can say, uh, oh, I couldn't help. This was her own original thought. I couldn't help undress my mom. To like to dress her for the funeral, I couldn't help undress her because her tetas were so big they were in her stomach, and I couldn't pull the shirt off. I was like, "The fuck are you talking about?" But I'm laughing as she's saying this. She's like, "Oh," and then I start laughing. She goes, "See, you can tell your your fans, ah, my mom is dead." <laughs> You're like, "Finally, you get yeah, it. You yeah. get what I do." You yeah, I go. Actually, I will have a new five when you die. Yeah, so you get I don't what know if I you do. could. 
<laughs> you get Speed what I do. Up. I totally prioritize my whole life as material, no matter what's happening. Yeah. And I use everybody for material. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I told my wife, I was like, part of the reason, you know, I was like, a, when I married her, I was like, is she a good material source? Sure. That's a big part of it. It totally is. Yeah. And there's also, even, you know, I'm married to a comedian and there was even a part early on where like I shit on her and she saw it at a show and she was super offended by it. Really? And I was like, what? And she was like, is that how you feel? And I was like, I was just, you were like, yeah. I mean, I was like making a joke up there, you know? Yeah. And she was like, yeah, but is that really how you feel? I was like, well, no, it's an exaggeration. Just like we exaggerate all these other things on stage. Right. But it took like a while. And then now it's like, we both say terrible things. Right. About each other. But it's, you know, all these years into it. But, you know, there is like. Well, that's when the feelings are like not as secure. Right. Right. So, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's like, was that true? Was it not? Now you guys, you're locked in. Yeah. And then yeah. now you're just like, you can be on stage like, please die. <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Tis the season for clean balls. Fa la 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 la. Our friends at Manscaped are helping you clear your driveway for safe travels this holiday season. From stocking stuffers to white elephants, Manscaped's products are top of everyone's wish list. Grab some crop mops for your pops or the body buffer for a holiday lover. Win this year's white elephant gift and help all the men in your life go from eggnog to nice hog this December and save 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash bears all you need to know is their platinum package 4.0 presents all the presents that are great for a stocking stuffer you've got the shampoos the body wash the gels the exfoliants absolutely everything they need to keep it clean you get the shears 2.0 that is their full kit for nail care the scissors clippers tweezers a file for the traveling man the preserved cologne that brings a light breezy woodsy feel the body buffer where you can throw out that old loofah and the lawnmower 4.0 this electric razor is with advanced skin safe technology is a life changer and is known for reducing nicks and cuts on Santa's sack. Save 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash bears. That's right. 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash bears. Manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the biggest holiday hit. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure, whether it's a career change, a new relationship, or becoming a parent. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient and accessible anywhere, 100% online. I love therapy. I don't know what I would do without it. I've been doing it for years now. And listen, as the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Bears. That's BetterHelp.com slash Bears. It's yeah. such a way to get through everything, comedy. It really is just it a is. way to deal with everything from like the most deepest philosophical uh query to just like the most mundane yeah you know giving a speech at a funeral i and know it really it just gets you through and then you see you see like how how it really i mean like it sounds super lame but how it really actually helps people who like we're used to like we are comedians but we're around comedians and you see how like cathartic it is to like sit with a somebody and and they make any comment whether it's on their personal life or culture or the world and you go like ah like it just feels so good and somebody who's not around that all the time and then gets a dose of it from you or from one of your friends and you're like oh it really does diffuse and help get through the moment or the day it does you know? yeah because my favorite i think the 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 sweetest messages i've ever received like the ones where i go are the when people are like this helped me like whatever you said on a stand up or on a pot, like help me get through this time. I used to be like, oh, but now I feel like I kind of register it more. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, they're not exposed to that. Right. No one around them is saying the shit that 
you say. Yeah. You know? I've gotten messages too like that about, ah, oh, my, my family's sick or whatever, and your comedy helped me. And you totally, you get detached from it. You're like, oh, yeah. really? Did yeah. Me, me talking like, about, you know, ass or whatever? Yeah. Helped you? Okay. Yeah. yeah sure, man. Yeah. It yeah. does. It really does. Uh, it does. And you can tell when you're, I, you ever see an audience walk in and then walk out of a show? Yes. They like walk in and they're like, their body language yeah, is yeah. all like carrying what their boss said. Yeah. How somebody smelled on the subway. It's like all on their disposition. Sure. And then they leave and they just look like. Loose. They look loose. People used to message me all the time. You still see them sometimes. They used to go like, I got laid after your show. <laughs> and you always be like, what? And they're like, yeah. Like you just kind of like made everybody, you know relax yeah we went we laughed and then we went home and hooked up yeah like, oh, yeah that's cool all yeah. right yeah probably helps with the game too like yeah you know he's not as stiff he's coming with a little bit more of a loose happy sure. vibe yeah. yeah definitely yeah yeah i mean you did the work for him yeah let's yeah. be honest <laughs> you should get a little tug too yeah but it's not like the guy's that fucking good yeah <laughs> hook me up yeah. speaking of game i uh <clears throat> i went and saw chris rock i saw you post that yeah and Dude. you said he was still on his game. I mean, I think it's his best set in 20 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was like the everything that you fell in love with about him as a comedian, it was that. I mean, it was he was just fucking hitting home runs. And it was everything. It was like pop culture, politics, race, sex personal stuff you know just boom 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 and you and he did a super long set and you realize this can be cut down to it's gonna be fireworks dude he yeah. was really the guy that made comedy hot again dude like it's really yeah. like people it, you know forget i mean back it, it just seems like people forget about how important that bring the pain was to sort of i just, talk about it all the time because yeah. it's just for i think it's our age because you're i think we're the same age yeah. or close to, it's like I was, a, I think, a junior in high school. So it's like, you think about a male forming his sensibilities and that comes out, it like never leaves you. No. You, you ne you'll never forget. I mean, I've liked so many comedians since then, but like that is like always going to be like the foundation. And uh, dude, he, I mean, you know, I obviously I can't repeat what I heard. I'll tell you off mic, but there were so many amazing bits. Like he really crushed it. Crushed he, it. That's what it was, was like his takes. You always his like takes, remembered yes. his takes and his insights. Because and, he, always, he has this like, everyone has like their style and their, their formula, you know? And his is like statement, repeat the statement. And the, repeat, the repetition of the statement is so the premise is explicitly clear. And then sometimes that statement is an unfavorable one. So everybody goes like, ugh. And then joke and then breakdown of the, like so then it's like joke 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 like so then he he breaks down a complicated statement with with logic so it's always like an insightful smart thing and just so many jokes and he had man he had like at least 10 members he did an hour 45 wow yeah yeah it was it was wild I always, like as you get more successful is it harder to do comedy a thousand percent yeah a thousand percent it is. And I think, you know, you watch careers, like even like his, have like ebbs and flows. And like, he's always highly proficient. But this feels like really, um, like just really dialed in, man. It was like, it was really good. It, like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is the same guy that did that special 25 years ago. It's fucking crazy. That's inspiring. To yeah, it is. He's back at it. Yeah. Uh, and, and actually, I think it's as inspiring when you're a comedian because you go, Oh, he's X number of years older. It means that you can continue to, you know, it's not like, it's not, we're not athletes. Right. We're not models. Right. It means you can get better into your 50s. Right. And then when you think about it, I think kind of like all the best comedians are over 50. Yeah. That's really when they hit even their best shit. Yeah. Is they're in their 50s, which yeah. is kind of crazy. That, and it, yeah. That, as long as you're fucking focused and not delusional and not, swayed by your fame you know like to, to to your point about like getting like i think if you get famous you can easily lose s sight of how to do the work and, that, and we've seen that happen to people but i think if you don't I mean you know you look at like burr he just fucking goes works works 
I think he makes a conscious <clears throat> effort too to sort of uh, like I think he f flew, you know, he flew commercial for like till till it got ridiculous. Where yeah. You're like, all right, come yeah. on, dude, and uh, yeah, because you have to remain the perennial underdog in some way. In some way, yeah, you can't be like, oh, my private plane was a little late today, guys. You know yeah. what that's like, right? No, I, a lot of times I'll I'll talk about flights and I'll uh, I'll pretend I fly commercial. <laughs> 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 I'll be like, the pilots came back and they're like, the pilots come like, wow. Well. You try to make a joke from your memory of what it was like. Yeah, You're like, like, I opened the door and said hello to the pilot. And people are going like, you can't open the door anymore. The door. Wow, he's been flying private since 9-11. God. God, it's so nice. You know, I made a, uh, you know who I sat right next to at, at a rock show was Michael Dell. Who's the that? Dell computer. Oh, yeah. So he's one of the, I don't know, 20 richest guys on the planet. And um, he was having trouble finding his seat, right? And I see him, and he's, like, looking. And I go, hey. <laughs> and he turns, and he, I go, do you need cash? And he goes, <laughs> what? And I go, do you need cash? And he was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, Okay. <laughs> I was uh, just on the plane today. I got on and uh, I was in coach. I was in the Oof. last wrong coach. God. And um, I'm so sorry. As yeah, as I got on, as I got on, I saw uh, this comedian, very funny, Matteo Lane, who I'm friends with. Oh yeah, yeah, Matteo. Yeah, he's yeah. so funny, and he was just sh sitting right up there in the front row. Oh, and I'm like the last on the plane. I'm sweaty, you know. Yeah. And it was just like I wanted to explain, like part of me. We I saw it in his face, going, "Oh, because his career is going amazing. Yeah. Mine's not bad, but it's not like his." And I could see in his face, kind of like, "Oh, this is uncomfortable." Yeah. Like yeah. we're just gonna say a quick hello, and then uh, you go by. And there was just. <laughs> And I was tempted to like just start explaining it and rationalizing hey, real it. Real quick, I just want you to know. I got rebooked. I was going to fly on the 7 a.m. What had happened was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm doing I'm doing Tom's podcast. He scheduled it last minute. So I transferred off my private jet yeah. because it was the only way it's to get here at a certain time. And I want to be clear about something. Yeah. I flew at least half a dozen commercial flights this year. So yeah. don't think it's that fucking all the time. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, one time I flew. Uh, in that situation you're talking about. And uh, I was in first and Bobby Lee boarded and he was like looking and looking and I go, hey, where are you sitting? As he boarded. And he was like, he goes, I, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, he went back to, to, a, to a coach seat and I asked the flight attendant to bring him a cup of water. <laughs> So you see her go back and she's like, he it's said that guy. That bit, and he was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I also, by the way, I have a video. We did, we, we were, we did a tour in Canada and I, uh, we had a private a jet, a charter flight. On, and sometimes on these flights, what will happen is because of the way that the companies book these planes, the the charter the flight the plane that you book which is a nice jet is unavailable and they upgrade you at no cost so in, in other words they send you a better plane than you should have and they did that on one of these so they're like you book this and we're sending you this fucking crazy jet so we tell the flight attendant so the jet is has a capacity of like sixteen passengers and it has like multiple cabins it's wild. I tell the pilot and the and the and the flight attendant, I go, can you go up to that small Asian man <laughs> and tell him that there's a weight issue and that to balance things out we need him removed from the plane? <laughs> and they were like, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I recorded him and you see the pilot being like, I'm sorry, but you have to Did leave. he do it well? And like he, he, he Oh yeah, he, he did he it acted, and, yeah. and Bobby's like, Okay, okay. <laughs> and he grabs his stuff, he goes, No, 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 no. And then I, I we all start laughing and he just goes, Apologize. <laughs> Apologize to me in front of everybody. <laughs> and he turns to the pilot and the pilot's like, I'm sorry, he told me to say, I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had eaten breakfast like in the, oh. in the Delta Lounge, like I was totally full. Yeah. And then the way uh, the stewardess was coming around um, selling food and I bought 
I bought the food. Yeah. And I think part of the reason I bought the food was I wanted to like prove to myself. I can. That I can. Yeah. Yeah. I almost was going to be like, can you just go tell Mateo that I bought some food back here? Can you give him this on top of his food? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Cause you know, I fly, I mix it up. I'm at that mix it up stage. Yeah. I'm at the mix it up stage where, where I, I, I'll splurge if it's like a long one. Yeah. But if it's under four, I, I'll save a couple bucks. Dude, and and I'll I, crawl and coach. I definitely, any place that like the chartering is for the crazy tour that I did. Like when we go like, oh, we're doing Green Bay to Cheyenne to fucking Topeka to, to, you know, like all this shit. You're like, we can't even do that week commercially. But anytime I fly, um, you know, like Austin to LA commercial. And even then I'll be like, yeah, but I... I do fly. I do charter sometimes. I'll, 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 <laughs> yeah. I'll tell, tell people that I charter sometimes. Yeah, it just yeah. like feels. I just recently got uh, TSA pre-check. I don't know why I waited what? so long. Yeah, I waited. How did you wait? I don't know. Maybe my tour schedule wasn't strong enough for me to consider it. Um, Have you done greeters yet? What's that? Uh, I was doing clear. Look. And then I was just dealing with being please. online and taking my shoes off. Please. Let me set you up. Okay. Greeters. We'll meet you curbside, ooh, and they'll take you to the front of of TSA. So everyone who's like pre-check clear will be like, "We're in the special line," and they'll be like, "Stand back," and then they'll take you in front of them, and then they'll walk you through. So you'll skip the TSA pre-check. You'll go through a side door, ooh, and then they'll walk you to the plane. And then they'll go, "Do you want to board first or last?" Does and anyone say last? I mean, I don't. Yeah, who would go, go no last? Fucking first. Yeah. And then you'll tell blind people to fucking wait. <laughs> like people with dogs. You're like, sit down. And then they'll put you on the plane first. A couple of veterans just on crutches. Yeah, you're and like, they're like, hold oh. up, buddy. And you're like, hold up. I got greeters. I have a few hundred dollars. <laughs> and then you get, they put you on the plane. It first. only costs a couple hundred? Yeah. Oh, I got it. It's go the get shit. That. Yeah. Yeah. Because I had to go get TSA. You have to go. And I went to a Staples because that's where they do it. And the guy had seen me on podcast there. So that was awkward. Yeah. That was really awkward. Because he was, he was giving me that same vibe. Like, don't you fly a lot? Yeah. Yeah. It was, and you know. It is so worth it. Yeah, it is. It's a game changer. It is worth it. And, uh, and you realize so many people will go like, whatever, a couple hundred bucks, not worth it. And you're like, you're insane. Yeah. And then you just, you get the benefit of that. The problem with clear now though, is like everyone has it. Exactly. So then you get on the line and you're just on another line. Which is why you're going to spend. And then you just see everyone on the clear line doing the same thing. Going, what the? F Everyone's looking at each other going, what's the point of this? You're going to spend the few hundred for the greeter. I'm going greeters. You're going yeah. greeters all the way, dude. Do, you, do I have to go to a Staples to get it done again? Or? No. No? No, no. You, you know a guy? I'll, I, I'll give you the number. All right, great. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're all set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. I'm doing greeters for Big flex. On. Yeah. You walk through there. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's great. It's the best. I'll still do a coach here and there. Yeah, here and there. Yeah, sure. Here and there. But you know, also on a on a hectic, crazy morning, it's worth it. You know, like when you're flying out of like a really like you're flying out of Orlando, you're like, fuck this. When it's all it's always chaos there. Or if you're doing vacation, your family or something. Yeah. It's so it's so worth it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna yeah. do it. It's just worth it just uh, yeah, less anxiety. Exactly. Less anxiety. That's the whole thing. Yeah, and that's why sometimes I'll spring uh, for like a first class is just so I can feel like I got a little more room if I want to fall asleep, I have a little more room. Because there's been times, has this ever happened to you where I've fallen asleep on the plane and I woke up and like I feel like I'm dying? Like has that ever happened? Like I, I'll have half my arms will be numb and I'll just feel like I'm not getting oxygen. And no. I'll, yeah. Like a serious panic Yeah, thing? like, yeah. and I don't know if that's panic or if I have, I have a heart problem. I, <laughs> I've woken up on flights being like, I think, I'm, I think we're going to crash. Right. And then I go, and I accept it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just die. Yeah. Let's just die right now. Dude, that happened to me once. <laughs> a bad one. I had a bad one once where we were flying into a small airport and my plane, the plane, there was so much wind that as we were coming down, the plane kind of went like on its side, like completely did like a, like the plane was listening to Fat Joe lean back. Like it kind of just did like a, <laughs> <laughs> and then there was this, everyone on the plane started freaking out. And this girl next to me started going, like you could tell she was like a type of girl who'd never been through anything in her entire life. And she started going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And she looked at me and she goes, what's happening? And I was like. Turbulence. I don't. 
Yeah. I don't fuck it. I don't, I don't, I'm sitting in a middle seat on a jet blue flight. I'm with you, lady. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what the, we're about to die, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have any answers for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And um, I don't know why the panic of others gives me comfort. Like if I, <laughs> if I see people freaking out, I just go like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know why. Yeah. It kind of, it has the opposite. It doesn't it make, calms it, you. It calms me down. Yeah. Seeing people lose their shit makes me relax. You know, or seeing someone scared makes me happy. Yeah. Seeing somebody, uh, you know, like yeah. super nervous. So the same me. thing that calms Jeffrey Dahmer calms you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. The most wonderful time of the year is also the most hectic time of the year. Everyone puts off shopping until the last minute. And if you have an online store like I do, you know that getting hit with a ton of orders all at once can be a game changer. You get buried in orders and emails from stressed customers who all they want is the stuff they purchase from you. Take it from me. This is the biggest time of our year over at burburbur.com. We have tons of merch. I know Tom does too at your mom's house. We have a bunch of two bears merch and you get overwhelmed. And I'm, I'm telling you, you feel like you're letting people down for their Christmas, their holidays. If you're still using the default shopping sh option to run your online store, chances are you're getting put in a lot of unnecessary hassles and limiting your potential growth. ShipStation works with all the favorite places to sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. You can manage every order from one simple dashboard, automate routine shipping tasks, print shipping labels, and easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment. I'm telling you, you'll want to save money and stress during the holiday rush when you sign up by using our promo code. You'll even get two months to try it for free. I know my friends over at Onnit love ShipStation. Wolfgang Puck Home. Saddleback Leather, Offerman Woodshop. That's Nick Offerman. Shout out to Nick Offerman. This holiday season, give yourself the gift of stress-free holiday shipping. Go to ShipStation.com slash cave today and sign up for a free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com slash cave. This podcast is brought by the greatest knife in the world, in my opinion, Kamikoto Knives. These knives are made with high-quality Japanese steel using traditional techniques. Each knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. The knives come in a beautiful, heavy-duty ash and wood box, which makes for a great present, specifically with Christmas coming around the corner. The knives are used by Michelin star chefs all over the world. I love these knives. They are my go-to knife for any cutting, especially when I cut sushi. Raw fish is so hard to cut. Uh, in my opinion, it's so fragile. And these knives slice through it like butter i mean it makes you i find myself eating more fish simply because of the knives and they're gorgeous that box you are not going to throw the box out you keep the box it's that beautiful and it does make for a beautiful holiday gift kamikoto is running a massive black friday sale right now and is offering my listeners an extra 50 dollars off any purchase with the discount code two bears go to kamikoto.com slash two bears and help support the channel. I like, <laughs> I like seeing somebody scoot around. Yeah. Like, I don't like, if I see somebody go, I don't like this. I'm like, this is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then we landed, right? When we finally landed, I always, like in that moment, I always pictured like, if we were all going to die. Yeah. I figured like, because she grabbed my arm at one point out yeah. of fear. Yeah. And so in my mind, I always imagined what happens next is like, I grab her pussy. Yeah, yeah. And we just keep going. Yeah. Because I don't want to die like being the last person to touch my I dick, know. you know? Yeah, exactly. But that that didn't, it didn't happen that and way. And also like, do you, can you imagine like the the turbulence part where you're like, just do it. And she's like, do what? And you're like, you know, <laughs> you grab know, my dick. You know, she's like, what? We're all thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's just start hooking up. That would be funny though if everyone did that and then the plane just lands safely and everyone's just like, of all course. right. That and was it, weird. And it's right as you come. Yeah. And she's like, ugh. And you're like, uh, you did it. I don't know. <laughs> She's the like, thing is, is can you get aroused in that situation? That's really well. People, I know you can. I can. Yeah, you be calm as a cucumber. I and I get super aroused on flights. Yeah, you know Do that's you? a thing. Yeah, I have hard ons like most flights. Well, yeah, is it it's the a altitude thing though. or? Well, here's the thing. Look up um, sexual arousal on flights, and apparently, there's a there's somebody sent me an article on this. There's theories on. I mean, maybe that I don't know. I used to get aroused by the stewardesses, but the, the, I don't think they hire anyone uh, under 60 now. No, now they're fucking dogs. Yeah. But back in the day, but there's all these, you know, it, it could be the adrenaline rush that comes from flying it can also mimic the feelings of sexual excitement. Um, so you're just sitting there rock hard. A lot of times, yeah. yeah. And I've even had, <laughs> not what I wanted, yeah. but I've fallen asleep, very aroused, kind of napped, wake up fully aroused. And even had like the male flight attendant go, 
did you have a nice nap? <laughs> like that, where I'm like, huh? He he's saw like, it. Yeah, he saw yeah, it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And it's hilarious. You just sleep in it with yeah. a Woody. Yeah. Some there's this article actually broke down too that that um maybe it's a lack of in other words, you're flying, there is no there's no inhibition, there's no control. You're out of control completely. So maybe that does something to you psychologically. Um, you know what I mean? Where like you can't control anything that happens over the next uh, couple hours, however long this flight is, and so that that might contribute to it. But it, apparently it's not completely um, it's not a rare thing that, that some people do this. So I, I've, I've always had this where I'm on, um, look, it puts yeah. us in a novel environment, breaks us out, out of our regular routine heightened state of generalized arousal. Um, but this is a, a thing for me where I'm always like, I'm always fired up on flights. And it literally, I can be at a zero pre-flight and a zero afterwards. It's, it's just when you're up there. Yeah. So it's the out of control thing. I I I think maybe. You ever thought about looking into getting kicked in the nuts and seeing how that goes? That might you might this might be I like the marijuana to your I have sensitive nuts though. I like a light graze. You like a graze. Yeah, I like nails and a gentle flick. Yeah. I don't like I don't like those. Me neither. No. I don't like I don't like what I don't see how guys can take the stomping without vomiting uncontrollably. Yeah. I mean, you could like hit it like that and I'd be like hold on and I'd be on the ground yeah how do these guys take full kicks it just shows you the power of like uh, human psychology that the feeling of being out of control or being like um, but doesn't that physically take you out it's got to I don't know I mean I've watched it I've watched I, it I happen. could take you know there's things that I'm I'm open to a pinch spank slap where you go okay go okay. on the butt things yeah like that, man yeah, <laughs> yeah. six inch cock in your mouth something that's different <laughs> yeah. but i mean a fucking like a full i've seen those yeah. full kick or stomp on the nut and the guy's like thank you and you're like are you not sick right now yeah like i don't know that, that's the one where i go i have no idea how you're able to i like i understand big slap like even the full paddle spanks or whipping you're like i get it I get it. I mean, that might, that might be too much for me with this guy, but I get it. But the nut stuff, I'm just like, I mean, I guess it's because my own physical tolerance for it is so low. Yeah, just, but you would figure every guy's physical. I, I would think so. Yeah, That's the thing is I, I thought that was universal, that all of us. Even MMA fighters who are the toughest guys. Double over. Double over when yeah. that happens. And there's guys out there who are like, well, I would like to come, so if you don't mind, yeah. <laughs> stomp on my balls. Yeah. yeah, it's funny that an MMA fighter will double over in pain and gets five minutes, but like some CEO of GE will be yeah. like, do it again. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> do it again so I can feel balanced. Yeah. Yeah. It's always like the richest guys, most powerful guys too. Because that would just be mean kicking like a poor guy in the nuts. <laughs> yeah. You're like, life's already doing that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's a little that redundant. Is a, and that is a total, like the psychology of that adds up, right? Super rich and uh, powerful guy is always in control. So he goes, I surrender the control. Do what you want to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think it's to get balanced out. I think we're yeah. like always seeking some sort of balance. Well, it's also, balance. I make like a guy like CEO, mm -hmm. his life is I make every decision. Everybody goes, how about this? And then he has to decide, right? <laughs> and as soon as that person walks out of the room, Two poor people come in. We need to know what to do with he. And so he's just decision, decision, decision. So what you're doing in that situation is you're really saying, you make the, the decisions and I'm just going to go along with it. <laughs> and that person goes, I'm going to kick you in the fucking balls. Which <laughs> <laughs> is crazy. And he's just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he likes it. He loves likes it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So something overrides the physical. But maybe it's that. It, it's, it's exactly what you're saying. It's not that he loves the sensation of getting kicked in the balls is that he loves that someone decided to do it. Right, I think so. That's where it's tied in, right? Yeah. It's that somebody's going, I have decided something and you're fucking going with it yeah. because I make the decisions around here. Right. It's almost like a, a break. It's like a vacation from having to make all the decisions. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they always talk about. And it's like, the most extreme. The most extreme. Yeah. They always talk about a sense of like a release mm -hmm. that at the end of those sessions, like with doms and stuff that they're like, like they're just, you know, they're just completely spent. Yeah. With um, oh my god, I I didn't have I didn't have to make any calls. Yeah. Last it's hour. like going to a spa for them. Yeah. Just like getting kicked in the nuts. Fuck. Is the way a, an ordinary person would feel after a nice massage. Yeah. And a facial. 
Yeah. They're like, no, nah, dude, I took 27 hard <laughs> stilettos to the Franks and Beans. Dude, and I've seen those and I'm like, how are you able to do <laughs> this? <laughs> yeah, I've seen the ones where like the videos where she's stomping on yeah. them oh, with the yeah. stiletto. Oh, we have them. Yeah, yeah and yeah. The, guys, the guys just rock hard like yeah. this. You're going, Jesus Christ, man. I saw one we watched on your mom's house where this lady was lining up and it was like, uh, it's the fourth quarter and if the, if she can make this 53 yard field goal we're going to the Super Bowl <laughs> like she lined up and fucking gave it everything she, and this guy's like uh, <laughs> and then she's like back up and he stands back up his legs are are shaking and then she's just like look at this blood yes yeah like it was bleeding 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 and she's just like and he's just like right back up like yeah, yeah. do it again <laughs> yeah sexual peccadillos are uh, they're it's just fucking fascinating fascinating and funny it's really yeah it's funny i remember one of the first things me and my buddy filmed was uh this video called slaver size it was this dominatrix trying to make an exercise video mm -hmm. and she used her real slaves um but they all like wore masks they were all like ceos of whatever and yeah she had them in like you know like uh, ballerina outfits yeah and you, you see these guys like pull up in like a Lexus Jeep and they get out with like a kitten mask on. Yeah. And then a ballerina outfit. And then they would exercise. And what she would do is she was just like, they would obviously exercise wrong yeah. on purpose. Sure. So then they could get the discipline. And that was the point of her slavery. That's a very video. funny concept. Yeah. <laughs> it is like, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. I was yeah. like, I don't think any of them were going to want to get in shape because they're just going to want to do it wrong. So you come over and whip them. I would love to misbehave for my, <laughs> you know, for my dom to yeah. give me my punishment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, so. it's, it's very, it's backwards. So many, and, and so many of those things are unexplored for people too, which is really fascinating that they'll... I don't want to open those doors. I know, but it's yeah. like people who, you know, you're living into your 40s and 50s and then like never trying anything you know you see people that are so what's the point of freedom without it yeah yeah, yeah man like fucking leave the country if you're gonna be like that yeah Get out of here. <laughs> go to a communist country dude yeah. if you want to be told what to come to dude tell her what you like man yeah and there's just so many things that can open the door for you now on the internet you can just if you get a little too curious you ever you ever go to something and, and <laughs> feel a little tingle and then you just turn it off real quick you're like ah, ah, ah. and then you go just go back like, just let me see something missionary male female yeah clearly male female <laughs> yeah that's yeah. clearly a male and a female wait let me see no, yeah yeah because yeah. trans porn blurs the lines yeah it blurs the lines a little bit yeah some of those ladies are like fantastic looking. Well, you've seen those. You ever get sent the, uh, it's like a little, like a gif or a meme where it shows this absolutely drop dead gorgeous woman who's like looking into camera, right? And she's like super, and you're like, God damn, what is she? And then like camera pans down, you see like perfect tits, navel, and then she like, has like a little wrap on she opens it and there's like an eight inch dick. And yeah. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. And they're like, this like, <laughs> gorgeous gorgeous woman with a huge cock yeah. and you're like um you're like what is this supposed to do to me like, it's why it's why i took the vaccine so many times because i'm like yo if science could do that i trust in science yeah it took a guy and then you see those before pictures like if you see their high school pictures yeah and it's just some guy named steve with braces yeah and he's just a guy yeah and then you look at it and you're like science did that they could come up with a vaccine that works yeah if it makes me want to fuck steve then I'll, it could definitely give me a vaccine that could protect me against this COVID. This is the first time I've heard this point of view. And I, I'm, yeah. really, I'm really into it. People don't think <laughs> yeah, about it yeah, enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, science did that, dude. They they create create women yeah. out of guys, which is the opposite of a woman. And where they can fool you. That's the thing is when you're fooled completely. When you, when you don't, it's like, some, you know, sometimes when you see uh, a trans woman, you're like, you know, I'll be respectful. Like, hey, it's, cool that you did that yeah and you like, try to you try to yeah. pretend like you're you don't see certain things it's you're, yeah you're yeah. just being you're being polite it's yeah. just the same way you talk to like your friend's grandmother you're like hello yeah like, you're just nice <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> and, and, and like you're just being nice it's like when you talk to like someone with special needs you yeah. know you're just like how's it going yeah so <laughs> you know and they're like i, I went on the roller coaster how's your day today yeah, madam yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good how's so, it going and then you see a trans woman who you're like, oh my god, yeah, like this is like, what a what a spectacularly beautiful woman, and you realize that it's a trans woman that level, yeah, is 
mind blowing. Yeah, and it's usually Asian. Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah, they, they are so much better at there's it. There's a sweet spot of like Asian to Latino. Yeah, yeah, kind of in there. If it's like too white, you're like ooh, or if it's black, you're like ooh. But there's like something in the middle there that just kind of works. Like yeah. the middle of the equator. You go too far north, too far west. They can't pull the they you can't pull the transition off. The right tone. You got the right tone. Yeah, yeah. You just there's, gotta, I know, and I wonder too if, like, in that environment, you would just be like, "Yeah, I switched, man. Yeah, that's all I do now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I lived, in, I live in Rio, and I just fuck trans yeah. women. I don't care. <laughs> it's, yeah, look at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> you just change completely. I just wonder how it works in Foot Locker, you know, oh, when yeah. they got to go buy shoes. Yeah, is it like where do they, you know? Yeah. Sure. Like if you're, because that's you the have one thing. The foot, a the women's foot, twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A woman's shack size. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the feet they, give it away. They have to go to the men's. That's the thing. Section. Here's the thing. Yeah. You're, you don't transition your hands or your feet. Right. That's the thing. Everything else, right? Like, I mean, you really, you know, you'd have you, you luck out on like neck, on facial structure, right? Like you, you know, there's some facial structures that like help with the transition and so, you know necks things like that obviously like shoulder width and all this but the ha your hands and your feet stay what they are they stay the gender you were born yeah, yeah. so does your cock in a lot your of cock times in yeah. a lot of times cocks will also be the same as yeah. what it was <laughs> yeah yeah that's a dead giveaway for uh male to female and i think the dead giveaway for female to male is uh that they're still like 5'1 and their voice, right. always. Like some guy will come Stature, in. Stature. Yeah. yeah is big. And then when the voice starts, you're like, you know, it's like, hey, you know, he says that, like, We're, we represent the lollipop. Like, hey, how's it going? My name's Tom. What's going on? Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, hey, so you're 5'1, 130? Yeah, yeah, I cool. am. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I'm a burly guy. I played, uh, yeah, <laughs> high school football. You're like, did you? Yeah. Did you? What, what, Kelly? Yeah. What's up, dog? <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up, dog? Yeah, they always have that. Speaking of trans, did you see the, uh, uh, the SNL writer has uh, said that they're boycotting Chappelle hosting. I did because see his like transphobic that. jokes are equivalent to murder. Yeah, and like they're just sitting this one out, and you're yeah. like, you get to do that. Yeah, that's wild. You all, you get to make that leap in logic too. It's equivalent to murder. Okay, now this says that that's not happening. I don't know. Okay. Well, I was I read a very clear uh, fucking thing today that said very much the opposite. So let me see. This is on. Mm. Yeah, it's not equivalent to murder. But when Dave Chappelle does put out a new special, the trans community does get prepared. They're they really like, do. Yeah, they're like, OK, here we go. I sent it to your Zolo. Um, yeah, I saw this today and I was like, huh? I would I have just, sex with a trans woman. Yeah. I would just pretend like my dick Can you imagine me on a flight sitting next to a trans woman? <laughs> 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 I wouldn't be able to say no. You, yeah, you'd be ready to go. All you got to do is pretend like your dick is so big that it popped through to the other side. Totally. And that way it's not gay. Okay, so just that... Just to be clear, this said, uh, Saturday Night Live, there are reports that some writers are, are boycotting in protests. They're not doing the show, but none of the actors are boycotting. And then, oh, and then this is an Instagram story earlier this week. Right, so she from, posted on her Instagram. She, she posted on her Instagram that uh, Celeste Yim said... Transphobia is murder and it should be condemned. Right, but go to that. There, there it is. I'm trans and non-binary. I use they, them pronouns. Transphobia is murder. It should be condemned. That's the, I guess that writer, um, who the report said it was boycotting the show. But now. Wait, did you just use it pronouns? Did I? I think you said, <laughs> I think you said the report said it was boycotting the show. My bad. <laughs> Well, the I mean, it's, the, I meant it as in the report. Right, right, right. The, the report, report. The, the report, report right. said it. Because said because she's they them. I got it. Yeah. 
I got it. I, you know. Those guys were pro- protesting the show, and you just point at them, them. which is her. It's like yeah. a game of who's on first. Yeah, it really, it's, it's and and by the way, totally logical. Makes sense. Everybody should be doing it. Yeah, everyone should. Yeah, just so. But the newest thing is that that's not happening. Am I right? That yeah, that's what I'm saying. So all the reports are like that's not happening. Okay. Well, I was just uh, my whole thing was actually more more amazed than somebody saying I'm boycotting so and so as a host is that you're allowed to right like at a if you were allowed to if you could be like hey you know um i don't like the way this guy talks about greek so i won't be writing on this week's show it'd be like are you allowed to do that like you yeah apparently it depends on if it was greeks they wouldn't allow you they'd fire you but if it's trans yeah, yeah i think they kill dave Chappelle or something like that yeah yeah they go okay we got to kill him then we have to kill him yeah, then, yeah. Uh, that's the, what we got to do yeah, there's, there's protected groups that no jokes are allowed about. You're not allowed to make a joke about them. And you yeah. must you must call them plural pronouns. Yeah. If they, you know. Yeah. Because like, all right, I get, you want to be a he. Or you want to be considered he. Or you are a he. I don't want to get into it. You are a he. But there's still only one of you standing there. Right. So why do I got to call you a bunch of guys? Right, they. Yeah, why am I going they? Yeah. You know, it's like, there's one of you. Isn't there another pronoun we could, that that somebody could use that is not plural? Annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's more of an adjective, but you know what? If we're playing games with grammar, why not just go with the truth? Annoying would like us to keep. <laughs> there goes on annoying. This. There goes annoying. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Yeah. There's a number of they them's out there. Yeah, it's really confusing. Like if you're. You imagine being on set, like if you're booked on a huge movie and they're like, all right, day one, we're just going to go over some pronoun usage here. Yeah. And you'd be like, I'm going back to my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I quit. Yeah. Imagine having to like explain to someone if you have someone, you're picking someone up in your car who has they, them pronouns. And you're like, and they're like, uh, are they coming? <laughs> he's like man we don't we don't got room in the car for them there's only one seat you're like trust me they'll no, fit they'll yeah, fit they'll fit it's yeah just, we got what is that first one Faye. Faye. yeah Faye. Faye. fair fair that's a a pronoun for a non-binary person Faye. Yeah. okay mm-hmm. actually i think the z zim zer thing actually kind of works and also works if you're warming up for improv, remember? Z, 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 Z. Z. <laughs> Yes, and. <laughs> uh, Themself. Zerself. Ziz. Ziz, Zer, Z. Zizai. Her. Her spelt H I R. I talked to the um, head of the psychology department at one of the countries. I am not identifying the person just because they haven't said I could. Right. <laughs> but uh, they are the head of the psychology department at one of the premier academic institutions in the country. Like if I told you the school, you're like, oh, that's a top tier school. And we're talking at this dinner about this whole phenomenon. And I was like, I, you know, I was kind of embarrassed because I was ready to just be told get dressed down that I'm the fucking dinosaur, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, fuck. And I was like, yeah, so like, what do you think of all that? You know, the pronoun stuff? And he goes, well, on day one of classes, I got our school, you know, students write their name and then <laughs> their email. And then the, right next to it, they write their pronoun. And I, and I don't know where he's going to go yet. And I go, so what do you think of that? <laughs> and he goes, when they write like they, them. And I go, yeah, he goes, it's nonsense. Wow. And yeah. I go, really? And he goes, yeah, but I have to go along with it. Like, I, I, I can't uh, tell them that it's nonsense, but it is nonsense. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. But also so sad right? It's, that he has to be quiet yeah. and be like, oh, I don't want to get... Because academia is the place that really that shit thrives the most. Yeah. Academia is the place where they go, everything that is worth, worth ridiculing we will act like is completely logical yeah. here in this pretend bubble that doesn't represent reality. Yes. You know, that and Holly, like Hollywood's another place or show business 
where people are like, oh, let's do the whole fucking charade, yeah. academia and show business. The two most make-believe places. Com where we will completely make-believe that what you're saying, I'm Latinx, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure, buddy. Yeah. It's weird. It's gone, and it keeps going. It never ends. Yeah. So it's like, because they never get satisfied. It's like it, their appetite for it is insatiable. Yeah, it's insatiable. So now you got... Um, Instead of pedophile, it's a uh, minor attracted person. It's unfucking believable. That's yeah. yeah, they're calling them maps. maps. Maps, yeah. And instead of because it, because pedophile has a stigma. Yes, yeah, it has a stigma. Yeah, yeah a I stigma. think it should have a stigma. Yeah. I think that's an earned stigma. I think we yeah. could switch it maybe to kid fuckers. Yeah. But maps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a couple maps over there. Don't you know? Don't make them feel weird. Yeah, yeah. they just don't. And then they got now um, inmate to incarcerated person, which incarcerated person. Yeah, because it has less of a stigma. Yeah, it also implies that the person maybe shouldn't be incarcerated. Right. You know, like right. That's what there's, is, there's a tone to that. That suggests. What, that's what they're going for. Like not really culpable, not yeah. accountable for what led them to be an incarcerated person. That's the problem is there's no end to empathy. That's the problem. I did social work, you know, you know when I first started doing comedy. And did the, you? Yeah. And the problem is like eventually, you know, only people who have done social work know, you get cynical enough to know that like, hey man, sometimes there's just no solution. Yeah. Like empathy is just like all, because all you end up doing as a social worker is just checking medications. You just go, hey, let's adjust this. Uh, okay, we'll change that with that. Like people don't always want to be Better. cured or yes. can be cured. Like I was working with a formerly homeless population and a lot of those people, they they were taken off the street in the SRO program in New York. And then they just would willingly go back out because they were more comfortable on the street. You know, it's like, that's what they wanted. Sure. And you can't say that, but. You know what the, the real thing is about? Like it shows you the balls of these fucking people. The, the people that are always giving you the lectures on how to speak. And is that with like, with Latinx or Latinx, 98% of the Latin population does not use or want to use that term. So you're, you're talking about 2%. You're saying 2% of a group wants to say something and 98% don't. But you're telling them, no, 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 this is what you are. You know, it's like, it's literally, it feels like colonialism. Like it feels like a people landing and going, this is what you'll use, this is what you'll say. Here's what you'll worship. And you have literal like Latino people just going like, we don't use that. We don't want to use that. And they go, we're going to tell you to use it. Yeah. And you should, you should accept this. Yeah. You know, 2%, two per, two percent. the 2% is, pro, you know, probably teens, people that are growing up in this generation that go, no, no, we want to be. And you're like, yeah, but nobody else is. I mean, 2% of the population fucks dogs. We don't <laughs> change all of our, fuck, you know, rule to... Like, how about the whole thing where we go with the majority? Right. The majority of people have said, we don't want to use this term. Who are those people? It's not white people voting for them. It's actual Latin people. And by the way, Latin is gender neutral. Right. You don't need to add the X. You I always have wondered it. that. Yeah. yeah. Latin is gender neutral. You yeah. say Latin America. Right. There are Latin people here. And the language that they speak is a language that you must use masculine and or feminine words. All words have this this variability to them. And they're like, no, no, no. We'll X that out. It's like, huh? This is how they speak. You're, you're putting on them a whole rule that they have not subscribed to. Right. It's so, it's so arrogant is what it is. It's so, it's just, it reeks of arrogance and it's why white women are the worst. <laughs> they're just the worst. You know, it's a good example of how ridiculous it is, is um, people of color, right? So yeah. you remember when color, like you, can't say colored anymore. Like yeah. colored was bad, but now yeah. it's like back as good. Right. So people like, love mm, color. Yeah. People, yeah. you're like, I thought that's not what we wanted. And, and most black people you mean go, I'm black. Yeah. I'm black. Yeah. yeah. And I go, no, you're you don't a go, person I'm of a color. person of color. You're a yeah. BIPOC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you go, why are we, why can't people this just is get a, chiller? This and, is a black community. Yeah. I'm black. My dad's black. Yeah. yeah you know, it's like, yeah, we're yeah. black. Yeah. And they're going like, why are you doing that? Yeah. yeah don't, don't call yourself that. Don't you, and let me tell you. Yeah. Somebody who has no idea what you've gone through. Let no me clue. tell you. Yeah. You're the first black person I've met. I mean, person, person of, of color. color. Yeah. Person of color. Yeah. I know. That really like. I don't, even, I don't know what they think it accomplishes either. Like, 
it's, it's, it's just softer and it's vague and it makes you go, which color? So, yeah. You know, just fucking lead with black. So I know what color I'm talking to, yeah. man, you know, <laughs> person of color, which fucking color? Yeah. Yeah. It says somebody can go, well, I'm olive. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And you're, and even if you were on the phone with someone and you know, they're black, you have to pretend like, you, you know, oh, you yeah. don't. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you clearly can tell. You could tell yeah. in seconds. In about a half a second. Yeah, oh you can God. tell. Yeah, customer service. You could just tell they have a different, like soulful way of talking. It's just kind of a different rhythm. Right away. Yeah, right away. Right away. Without Hello? a doubt. Yeah. Can I help you? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, "Oh boy, this is gonna take a while." <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, you know, or you if that if you get the if you get the one from like a million miles away oh, in yeah. India, and they go, Mr. They, Mr. Papa, we are very happy for you. Your be like, commitment to our company. <laughs> you're like, like, I can't. Shit, I'm gonna spend half the time just trying to figure you're out. Like, what do you have saying. a friend there? Yeah. I can talk to. <laughs> 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 yeah. Isn't it shocking when you actually get someone who's just like, hello, yeah. and you're like, what? And you hold on to them, like, wait, can I talk to you longer? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're like, where are you? And they're like, Charlotte. You're yeah. like, you're in fucking America. <laughs> yeah it's yeah. it's rare it's yeah. rare it's, it's usually rare. usually indian usually you get the indian yeah yeah you get indian yeah i don't know sometimes you're i mean then sometimes it goes so smooth and you're like hey by the way way to go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you really fucking nailed it on yeah, this call man it's really a pleasant experience when it goes good yeah yeah it really yeah. is yeah yeah you could make anyone appreciate the smallest thing when it usually goes bad yeah, that's how you can, you know, that's how you can control people. Doesn't this make you feel, by the way, that like you'll never leave podcasting? Absolutely. Yeah. You can't to talk be able like to this. talk about this stuff. Yeah. Anywhere else. Yeah. And it's all I want to talk about. Yeah. yeah. Because, because you live in the real world. Yeah. Can you imagine like tomorrow you get hired by some, I don't know, fucking NBC show or something. And they're like, hey, uh, yeah, we were listening to your thing. Yeah. Could you not? And you'd be like, uh, I, I think I'd rather just do that. Yeah. They're Hold. like, okay, first episode, we want you to lead with your pronouns. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, okay. Okay. Hey, so pick them. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, all right, I'm going to go with hee haw. Does <laughs> that work for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I imagine, like, I think, like, that's why I would love to see, like, a real Jimmy Fallon show. I'd like to see the real Jimmy. Fallon oh, the real show. Fallon. Yeah, like if he was to do it, if like the where way he has he a couple wanted, of drinks before. Yeah, where he just plops a couple of Jamesons and shoot, like chases them with Guinnesses, and then some actress comes on and he's just like takes his dick out. Yeah, and he's like, I can't. Yeah, I can't do the Jay Leno thing. I you drive. I can't do it. And anymore. he's like, I can't pretend. Yeah. to to act like what you said was entertaining yeah, or funny. Yeah, can't do it. And she's like, and then I. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get this dress. And he's like, who gives a fuck about your stupid dress? And she's like, what? Yeah. He's like, suck my... <laughs> he changes the egg game. Instead of just cracking eggs on each other's heads, he just takes them and just starts fucking pelting them on him. You suck. I'm only throwing these at people of color. And he fucking starts egging people. <laughs> it's all pent up. He can't like, take Whoa. it. <laughs> Fallon. Yeah. Uh, that would be a great show. That would that bring would it back. Awesome. That would. That would bring 25 it 25 million viewers. Yeah. Second night. In a second. Yeah. Everyone would tune in. But after that. a week, he's just like totally hung over and strung out. <laughs> <laughs> like, we can't put him on TV. <laughs> he's just fucking drunk. <laughs> he's just cursing. He's like, my wife left. Fuck you. <laughs> the whole show's bleeps. Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> That's in his heart, you know? fucking hate it there's so many goddamn arabs in this city and they're like whoa <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> the band just plays the fucking roots just start playing like, oh, yeah. this is a christian country yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just pours himself a drink yeah, yeah. it's in God, there that would be the best fucking tonight show yeah ever. and it would happen because he has to like he has to stop him so he can't say anything he wants. Nothing. I don't know how you could live like that. He's so I guess I do. Giddy. He's $100 giddy. million, dollars, you know. You that go I home, guess. you hit your wife, you're fine. Balance yourself out. $100 million? I'm sure he's got, like, I'm sure it's like, I wonder what it is. Like, he's got a lot of money. So he figures out another way. Maybe he gets kicked in the balls on the weekends, you know. 
just to balance himself out. He has 16 million for hosting the show. Okay. But it's also every year. Yeah. That's the thing. I thought it would be more, but I guess that's not what it is anymore, huh? Yeah. There's also, there's so much competition, right? Because there's him, there's Colbert, there's Kimmel. There's yeah. all, there's, it used to be there's fucking 25 channels. Yeah. So the viewership would be yeah, th through the roof. I wonder who, who's going to get um, Daily Show now that Trevor Noah is going. Yeah. I don't know where what they do. It seems like they it's going to be someone not American again. Um, maybe. Yeah, I mean he's he's great. He's very funny. He's charismatic and everything. But uh, it always made me wonder, like, what, do we not have? It's not going to be a white guy. No, that can't no, do there's that. Too many white guys. No, can't yeah, do that. It'll be like, who could it be? Uh, maybe somebody from the show. Not Michael Promote. Costa. No. Yeah. Maybe like Roy Wood Jr. It'd be funny be if he asked and they just laughed in his face. They went, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Please. Uh, uh, Hassan used to do it. He did it. He did. He's a good like host. Yeah. You know? Minaj. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But he's straight, right? Hassan? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's no good. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cal mm. Pan would be good. Yeah. Oh, how about Ronnie? Ronnie could be good. He was on the show. I don't yeah. know if he's still on the show, but he's very he's still funny. still on there, I think. Yeah, very, very funny. funny. That could be a whole different perspective. He could be really good. Yeah. I think they'll host from... I think they'll hire from within. You think so? I mean, that's my guess. I think it makes sense for what, what the show is now. I mean, it's it's such a great brand. And um, those guys that we just listed are all, you know, highly proficient funny dudes I, I think it makes sense i think what they might do is just give it to Zelensky. yeah yeah another comedian just another comedian but he's ukrainian and that yeah. right now is yeah. as hot in a press group every, as you can get every day he opens with it and you're like come on yeah. he's like we need more money yeah <laughs> come on by the way what happened to that thing huh it's like a, a show that's still on yeah you're like is that on <laughs> it's still on yeah, it's still going like wow Oh, I thought it went off the air. I yeah. thought that, what season are we in? <laughs> it's Six like the, seasons It's like in? The Bachelor. You're like, what? Yeah. What? They're really? still going? Yeah, I think it's still on the air. I, I think ratings are down. Ratings are way down. I think ratings are down, yeah. People are even like, you know what? I guess the Russians have a point. They're kind of swaying now. Yeah. They're like, I don't know. It's their border. Yeah, you at know? this point, they're like, all right, guys, figure it out. Enough. I had a guy uh, give me a, like a full pro putin speech on it oh that's fun and i thought he was doing a bit that was fun yeah because it was at dinner <laughs> and i was like he was like i brought up the fact i was like it feels like it's not even like covered that much anymore you know it's an act of war they just fucking leveled a school yeah like and he was like yeah i mean he goes and like putin always being portrayed as the bad guy and i was like what <laughs> and then he did this whole like five minute like monologue. And at the end I was like, Oh, this is real. I was like, Oh, and I was like, yeah, man, let's get here. Let's get another drink. Yeah. You know? I, I didn't know. No one knew where to go. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah. He was like, everyone's always like making Putin out to be He's this fucking dick. And I was yeah. like, yeah, he goes, he could have leveled that place. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, he went like, it could be. Yeah. He, he, could, he really dialed he, it back. Yeah. He dialed, was like, He's really holding on. Yeah, I was like, yeah, minus some of those hospitals and schools, he fucking he took it easy. Yeah, he goes, he left a path, he left a fucking pathway for the ref, like to get out. <laughs> he's a like, good guy. He's a guy. He's a fucking solid dude. Yeah, good lawyer. Like, yeah, good he's lawyer. also good at like uh, with critics in Russia. They usually don't last that they long. They fall out of windows. Yeah, yeah. they those, get poisoned a lot. A lot of the journalists are yeah. just gone. Yeah, they just eat the wrong food all yeah. the time. It happens. Yeah. I've been to a lot of restaurants like that. Yeah. You fall out of a hospital window. That that happens. They're always so close to the bed. Yeah. And then you're trying <laughs> yeah. to go like where I, it's happened to and me they almost. They open easily. They you just open go, so easily. Whoop. And like yeah. sometimes you get up and you're like, where's the bathroom? I've made that mistake. I fell yeah. out of a window once. It's like, oh, this, it's, I thought this was a bathroom. It happens. Yeah. 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 This dude literally talked at this dinner like like the Kremlin sent him to our dinner. Right. Like he was like, what is he supposed to do? <laughs> I mean, they're on the border. He's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get more calamari. I don't know, man. Yeah. 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 Maybe the Kremlin did. Yeah. Yeah. 
I like how his uh, Putin's reasons just uh, changed a lot. At first, yeah. it was like, we're getting the Nazis out. And he's like, all right, all yeah. right. Yeah. I didn't buy that one so much. All right, how about this? NATO. NATO's NATO, pushing up against us. I don't us. want them here. It's our border, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, all right, fine. Uh, it's because of the Kardashians. Does that work? He just keeps fucking. Just trying stuff. Trying stuff. Which one do you like? Yeah. <laughs> he's <laughs> just like, throwing out premises. Yeah. I mean, that one could be a bit. Yeah. And people are always trying to call him like a fucking psychopathic dictator. He's not. He's not, a good guy. He's a great he guy. He changed the Constitution so he could keep running, but he needed to do. He needed to do that. It's not ego. It's not him being a, a control freak. He's a totally sweet human being. Definitely a he cool really guy. He's totally. He's being misrepresented in the media, much like Kanye. Kanye is a great guy. Who loves the Jews? He's having a real interesting uh, fourth quarter. I hope it doesn't stop. I'm year. enjoying it. Q4 is yeah. really something. It's fun to watch. Yeah. It's fun to watch him just double down every time. Wild. Yeah, he's just... Can I tell you the thing about him that's actually, I think, is almost unfair about all this? It's just putting it up. Promote. In other words, most people who have some type of bipolar and are out there just saying wild shit, are not famous, right? But everything that they're saying during that time, you'd just be like, well, he's kind of going through a manic episode right now. <laughs> but when you're famous and you're going through an episode and you make it news and you're making people respond as if you are of <laughs> normal faculties or whatever, like that's really what's unfair about it to him. It's like, mm -hmm. You just stop interviewing him. Right. Like he's gonna say wild shit because he's out of his fucking mind right now. Yeah, and I thought I thought everyone's trying to be very empathetic now, but they're, oh yeah, they'll burn him. They'll burn to the ground ass, yeah. when he's clearly off his beds. He clearly, dude. He's clearly, and I'm not even saying like you're not accountable. You are accountable for what you say. Yeah, and like I, clearly they're making him accountable. Is but, it is it wrong though that it's entertaining? No, it's, it's sort of like that friend that you have who has a drinking problem, but you kind of don't want him to stop because it's fun. <laughs> like you know he's gonna die but you're like god it's too fun i don't have anyone like that <laughs> i set you up for that one <laughs> it's fun remember when um I, I i felt bad about this later but it's true remember when mel gibson did the drunk voicemails oh yeah and it's like we played them and mm -hmm. we laughed and then later i was like you know, we played somebody at their worst moment who just happened to be famous yeah leaving a drunk voicemail that was wild and inappropriate and crazy. But we played it because it was entertaining. It was yeah. entertaining to hear somebody talk so crazy. Nothing's off limits now. If, no. if, if someone could get a story or, yeah, it's just, it's off limits. But Kanye, yeah, I mean, to me, I think that's the, that's the, the narrative you see the least is yeah. that he's off his meds. And I people mean, go like, well, that doesn't mean that you know, you can say whatever you want. It's like, well, no one said that. Right. But we are saying, you should at least acknowledge right. that this guy is not of sound mind. He's not of sound mind. He's saying wild shit. Yeah. You know? But I am torn over it because I don't want to. It's, it's I good. When he, when he goes, that one point where he goes, I too now understand. He goes, I understand. I want to apologize to the black community. And you're like, finally, he's going to, you know, he's going to, yeah. he's going to make it okay. And then he just doubles down. He just pulls a reverse and he goes, because... When Adidas took my money, they essentially put their boot on my neck. Oh my so god! So I know what how George Floyd felt. That shit. Was, you're like, <laughs> you're like, whoa, no, 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 no. no. That's no I'm the saying, opposite of apology. It was symbolically a neck, a, a, a knee on my neck. I'm just saying, like, I felt the same way he felt. Yeah, and yeah. you're going, oh, I couldn't breathe as my shares went out the window. <laughs> and you're like, uh. Oh shit! He's like I lost like three billion dollars that day. You're like, stop! Just stop talking. Stop it, man! Yeah. Stop. Yeah, yeah. You know they they mess. They try to tell me I was crazy. Try to mess with my medications. My doctor. I won't say what religion it was. <laughs> that was a good one too. Yeah. Where he's like, I won't say it. Yeah. And you're like, I think you said it. Yeah. I think we know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They don't play when you when you start fucking saying shit wild like that and and you talk about corporate i mean the chase bank stopped being his bank yeah like, they were like for all his business like that they were actually i think first of all the people that like backed out yeah they were like you need a new bank to yeah. do transactions with which is pretty crazy yeah and he was probably going see see what they do yeah yeah i told you 
<laughs> yeah. 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 And everybody is like out of business with him. And then Kyrie. Yeah. Not Kyrie. to the same degree, but is also like Nike dropped him. I never thought you could be that level uh, athlete with an endorsement and have someone like a Nike's usually stood behind all their athletes yeah. during, you know, turmoil. But they were like, nah. Yeah. You're done. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, they didn't take away Kanye's money when he said that slavery was a choice. No. They didn't, they were like, you're like, when he said that, you're probably like, this is probably going to keep going. Mm -hmm. Like when Kyrie was like, I'm a flat earther, you're like, it's not going to, he's not going to yeah, figure it out he's tomorrow. A flat earther. Yeah. What was the other thing? He had another one. Oh, he's, he was a super anti vax. He was like the super only guy. Super anti vax. And now he's like an Israelite as well. So you just know it's going to keep going. I wonder, the next one's going to be, he's got another one coming. Those things don't stop, you know? Yeah. You know, people who are into that, they don't stop. I, I think flat earthers, I, I don't want that to stop either because that's yeah, fun. That is one of the best. Yeah, that's one of the best. And also like when you're yelling at them, it's almost like yelling at retarded kids. Yeah. That is not, does anyone, how come nobody's advocating for them? Yeah. It's you, like those guys are not smart. Why no. would you yell at them? That's like yelling at a guy with Down syndrome. The, it's mean. It, it's super mean. It's and, mean. And their logic is always, they're like, I look out the window, I don't see, I don't see a curve. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> I'm like, I've been on planes. I don't see curves. Well, one, like, guy's, <laughs> one guy's solution was, he was like, there's one solution to this. Because I looked into this once and I was dying laughing. There's one solution if we put a surveillance camera on the moon to watch the earth. He was like, because they can't Photoshop it. They're going to slip up at some point. Yeah. At some point, they can't Photoshop it 24 hours a day. Yeah. I just need to be able to see it 24 hours a day. You do. Yeah. You do, Tim. Yeah, Tim yeah. needs to. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but you know, for them, it makes them like James Bond now. Totally. Like, there's also that great, there's these videos on YouTube you can see of this too. And it's in one of the big docs about flat earth. It has like the most prominent flat earther. And I'm not smart enough to know the experiment, but apparently there's <laughs> experiments you can do that are, are pretty simple, right? Where you line up, I don't know, something over here, laser light or something. And, and they're like, if, if this hits this, you know, it would prove that the earth is round and that's not going to happen. And then they do it and they're like, oh, hold on. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's change. Hold on. I don't know. This is kind of fucking me up right now. And then yeah. they get like, oh, and they're like, yeah, you just ran the experiment that yeah. proves that it's round. <laughs> I know somebody who thought that he th he's a flat earther and he thinks that I go, what about like all the, um, like the NASA footage? And the, his answer is like, yeah, that's all Photoshop. That's yeah. all. I go, all the images that ever are released from How space? about the ones from before they had Photoshop? Yeah, they're like, those they're like, are no, all. they did that by hand. You're like, all right. Okay. <laughs> what are you getting out of this? I just don't know what the, like, what would be the point? Who's benefiting? Like, why would they lie about the shape of I tried the to Earth. buy Flat Earth yeah. artwork and it was all sold out. It, it was, was sold out? Yeah, like one of the prominent Flat Earth <laughs> uh, artwork people. I was like, shit, sold out. Yeah. So good. It's just a shape. Like what? Who's making money on that? What's the? But what do you point? get out of it being flat? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like if you're like, all right, it's flat. Now what? I think if you did that, they would go, whoa, 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 don't do that, because then you take their fun. Yeah, the you fun take their mission is being combat. That's you, the, that's the fun of like every conspiracy theory. Yeah. Is that somebody goes no, and you're like, I have a secret. Yeah, I think this was actually exciting to conspiracy theorists. Is that like. I have information. It's, it's like the same as knowing a secret. I know the truth. Yeah. You're such a fool that you haven't looked in. And it's exciting. It's exciting. And I get why it's appealing. I just, I can't help but look at the majority of them, even when they're my friends, as just so stupid. Just like <laughs> extraordinarily you stupid mean accurately. People. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah, look at like, God, you're so fucking It's hard for me dumb. not to see this accurately. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like all these theories are so fucking stupid. When you, you know, if you just... Because you, what you do is you bring up one point that dis and they go, H but ignore that. <laughs> and you're like, well, no, that's the point. Right. The point is that of, you know, you really think this was a made up moon landing in 69 yeah. or whatever? Like, yeah. what? You yeah. think everybody that worked on that was in a, a conspiracy together? Right. And they all kept their mouth shut? Right. But you know what the funny thing is about Flat Earth is that at least has a motive, right? So they say, oh, we wanted to beat the Russians. 
and right. make it look like we were stronger. So there's at least a motive I can understand, although- Of moon landing. Of moon landing. Yeah. But with the flat earth, you're going, what's the What motive? do we get out of this? What do we get out of it? Yeah. Well, like, you know, who's- I just know that they're lying to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who is lying to you? <laughs> the powers that be, man. Yeah. Yeah. We should do that. Like the whole world should just appease them and go, you're right, it's flat. It's flat. And watch them go, wait, don't do that. Hold on, what are we going to do now? Yeah, they're like, no, dude. I, I don't do want to go nothing back. nothing else. If, if, if you agree, then I'm just a guy who goes to Panera Bread now. Yeah. I don't have an exciting, I'm not James Bond anymore. Right. Cause now, like those, that's who those guys are. It makes them feel sexy. That's it's, what it does. It's real sexy. It's yeah. sexy to know that, like, to know the truth. Yeah. Right. It's and sexy nobody to, else does. Yeah. You're like, what do you do? It's like I, I work at, you know, uh, AT and T. That's not sexy. But you're like, what do you do? You're like, well, actually, I'm the vice president executive on the executive advisory board to the Flat Earth Society. Yeah. And let me tell you a few things. And there's, and it's not just that. Yeah. Just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> And then we got a couple other things up our sleeve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you know you get some kooky broad. What are the other big ones? We got flat Earth. We got moon landing. We got nine eleven as an inside job. We got um, nine eleven has some weird things. It has weird things some weird for things. sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, those are big ones. JFK is a big one. Epstein. That's yeah. an uh, that's the la latest most sexy one. Is yeah. that everyone's like the guards left. Cameras were, uh, you know, it just so happened. But I mean, they also leave out the fact that he changed his will a couple of days before and left everything to his brother. Yeah. Because he knew he was going to be dead. Right. Soon. Whether um, it was going to be him doing it or, or somebody or else. Bill yeah. Clinton. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Clinton being like, <laughs> choke him out. Um, but there's people that won't even entertain the idea that he hung himself. Right. Like, okay. I mean, I understand why it's appealing that he was murdered there, but it's also completely plausible that someone in his position realized it's over. I'm going to die now. Yes. Um, but the weird thing is he was on suicide watch. He was, and they did leave. And they did leave and the camera did yeah. just like malfunction. It's sexier to think he was murdered yeah. that a hitman came in. Or you can just go with the truth. He yeah. used his magical Jew powers to turn off yeah. the camera just by going like that. Off. Yeah. He made it rain outside so people yeah. were distracted. Yes. And then he killed himself. Totally true. Yeah. He did have that uh, hyoid bone break, which you see more commonly in a homicide <laughs> than a suicide. Right. But it can happen. It in can a suicide. happen. Yeah. Um, whatever. Some people believe that research facility in Moscow is mind control lab. Oh, yeah. There's like, there's also people that believe that weather is controlled by powers that be. Yeah. Um, that's another one that, I, yeah, I, we won't say, we won't say the religion of the people we yeah. have in mind. Yeah. They, uh, they I, do a lot of bad things. Yeah. <laughs> That's another one. I don't understand the motive. Like, all right, so what do they get when it rains or sunshine? What's the, what do they get? What, yeah. What do you get out of it? Yeah. Chemtrails. That's a big one. Big one. Chemtrails. When you just see condensation in the sky. Yeah. Because of the temperature <laughs> up there versus the temperature of what's coming out of a jet. Yeah. Um, Shapeshifters is a big one. Yeah. The uh, the reptilian people, that's another big one. They believe people in power are reptilian this people. This is one I didn't scroll back. Up. What is this? The safeguard complex in North Dakota was built during the Cold War. Something is related to the Illuminati. Okay. That's fun. That's a general uh, vague one. Yeah, that's kind of vague. Yeah. The sightings of Bigfoot is fun. And then the, the funny thing is you bring up something like Bigfoot and maybe somebody who's into some of these goes, well, yeah, of course this is nonsense. And you're like, okay, but again, you're discrediting your people. Right. You, <laughs> these are yours. <laughs> uh, there's a giant active volcano under Yellowstone. Wind. If it erupts, it could wipe out the U.S. conspiracists. Believe okay. the government knows when the eruption will. Oh, okay. It could wipe out the U.S. I'm sorry. That's right. what it's saying. That this volcano might... And then why would the government be like, well, do they all leave at the same time? <laughs> I mean, do you know how fucking stupid this is? Okay. I wonder how that one came to be. How did it, how did that one even catch on? Because that's a boring one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're sitting at the conspiracy Imagine theory, you just go there every day to look at the volcano. Yeah, you just, I know something's weird here. Something's happening here. Yeah. But if you pitch that idea at the round table of conspiracy theorists... And they're all going like reptilian people. Uh, yeah. The earth is flat. Uh, you know, they're all this cool stuff. Yeah. And then you go, hey, man, I think there's a volcano under Yellowstone. You're going like, this dude's lame. That's uh, 
Some believe that Truman Capote wrote Harper Lee's famous novel To Kill a Mockingbird. I've never heard this. Never heard that. They grew up in Alabama, were childhood friends. They went on to each become celebrated authors. Capote wrote his crime story in cold blood, Lee, the great American novel To Kill a Mockingbird. When Capote went on to write numerous books, Lee published only one other book in her lifetime, leading some to believe that Capote... I mean, why? that's the theory? Just that he wrote a bunch of books and she didn't? Another boring one. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's the, what's the guy who wrote... What's the one um, that we all read in high school? J.D. Salinger? Yeah. Catcher in the Rye? Right. Yeah. He wrote that and like one other book too. That was that? Yeah. yeah. Usually if you write a book that becomes absolutely iconic and... They don't necessarily write many. They're weird fucks that write these books. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got weird minds. Yeah. Yeah, and then also they're like, hey, this book will never stop selling in your lifetime. You're like, all right. Yeah, I'm know. good on one. Yeah. yeah. Some people just need one hit. That's it. I watched that Salinger documentary about how he actually wrote more, and it was unreleased. And then at the end, they're like, it will be released. And then, of course, I don't think we've seen anything. Right. So... By the way, you know who I think we should actually publicly execute? These, <laughs> that was a hard turn left. It is, but I was thinking of I was thinking of great works. Yeah. Are these environmentalists who their form of protest is to oh, yeah. defame like masterpieces of art and they yeah. like threw tomato juice on like a Monet or a Van Gogh and then somebody else just did it for another one. They went to another museum, go up to some fucking masterpiece and like glue their dick to it or whatever and they're mm -hmm. like we need to protect the earth. And like, this is your way of doing it. It is, I mean, I literally think they should put a bullet in your head. This is, look at this shit. Yeah. You fucking piece of shit. I think all it does is make people who are on their side go, let's just let the planet boil just to spite you. You fucking scumbag. You know what they should do is they shouldn't kill you, but they should like break your arms and legs. You know, like do like some real Saudi shit where like they just humiliate you, sever your limbs or something. It's really dumb infuriating. Fuck. You dumb fuck. It is, it is so, I mean, that's how you get your, and I realize that what they're, somebody watching this will go, well, you're doing exactly what they want. You're talking about them and bringing up their cause, but it's like, you have to have another way that, other than defacing and, and, and destroying like masterpieces of art to, to make your point about climate. There's, there's no other way that you can do this than by. It's you're turning people off. You're of actively course, turning Van people Gogh off. And Mose. I mean, it's just, they're pricks. I agree. They should be executed. We yeah. need it to, we need a little bit of a purge to like, if that gathering right there was just people watching them get executed. Yeah. I'd pay for sweets. Like if there was like a suite and then you can watch this with food and yeah. Drink. If somebody put their put it on their Patreon, I would join. Would you to like watch to get it. catered while you watch them die? Yeah, I would. Like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just ridiculous. It's absolutely. It's self defeating, is what it is. <sighs> oh yeah, that one right there. That's in Spain, um, on the far right there. That looks like it's at the uh, Reina Sofia. If I, tell me if I'm wrong, the one that you highlighted. Yeah, why activists are. I'd love to see more celebrity. This is Australia. I don't, what the fuck is that? Those two guys are still doing shit? Celebrity <laughs> IOU, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, two activists. Well, it's Pablo Picasso's massacre in Korea. So it was, uh, it was in Australia, but yeah, it's Spanish art. I Climate was... chaos equals war and famine is their uh, banner that they put up. They highlighted the connection between climate breakdowns and human suffering. Now you're going, you're going all you over the place. you got to destroy masterpieces yeah. to do this? I mean, also, I don't know if that's the most salient thing about climate change. I mean, I think people were massacring people before they knew that the climate was off. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't think that's what causes it. I mean, where can we give these guys an idea? What else could they do that doesn't have to destroy some of the greatest works of art? Kick CEOs in the nuts. Yeah. In public. In public. And record yeah. it. Yeah, and record it. And yeah. go, yeah, that'll bring attention. Right. Um, what do people love? Um, porn. Sure. Number one, always. So do a porn. Do a porn and talk about climate change yeah. during it. Yeah. <laughs> do a blow bang. And everyone that switches out, you go, the earth is being destroyed. <laughs> ah. Do you think there's anything to the conspiracy theory that maybe some of these... Um, some of the Mickey Mouse stars that were in the Mickey Mouse Club 
um, were made by the government. Like, you ever notice they don't have parents? Like, who's the, where's their parent? There's no interviews with Justin Timberlake's parents. Yeah. You know? It's always a little weird. Christina Aguilera, who's, I never see her parents. By the way, how about that voice? I feel like it's not talked about how it's incredible. incredible that voice has and been. And that's what makes me suspicious. Yeah. She's like four foot seven. Yeah. But she's got a voice like a 400 pound Aretha Franklin. Like a black woman, like an older, fatter black woman. Yeah. That's how did you get an old, black, fat voice? It's got to be in a lab, dude. Maybe yeah. a Petri dish or whatever. They yeah. make her. Like, they can do that now. Yeah, her voice is completely... That's one of those things you realize when a voice is put into a person. Like, somebody put that in Somebody you. put that in. Even yeah. some of the athletes, like Shaquille O'Neal, no father. You know, Phil's my father. You, yeah, yeah. You're like, who's the real father? And he's going, like, the right. United States government. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. LeBron oh, James. I'm just, you know, I'm 7'1", 330. And, you know? run, and run like that? Yeah. LeBron James, 6'8", size of Karl Malone. Yeah. With that agility. And 38? Yeah. Now? Makes no sense. And no dad. So no you're going, sense. like... I, I can buy that. Oh, you mean the CIA? You're yeah, right? the CIA is my guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one, and you're like, hmm, that's interesting. Because they can do that. So I would get behind this theory 100%. Yeah. Like, you might have just unlocked something in me. I Yeah, there we go. I'm going to start talking. I'm going to be like, oh, you mean when uh, LeBron's dad, uh, the CIA director, <laughs> made him in Langley fucking 38 years ago? Yeah. Please. It's a good one. It's yeah. a good one. It's underserved. Nobody's talking about it. Yeah, you're right. And there's, you know, it's suspicious. It is. It's a little suspicious. Ryan Gosling was also in uh, the Mickey Mouse Club. Oh, right. And who's his parents? And yeah. supposedly he's Canadian, but then all of a sudden he's here. What are you doing here, man? Yeah, like what's going on? Yeah. How'd you show up here? They overlooked all the American kids and just plucked one. Some of these athletes too, you, like you're saying, like these guys, you're like, I've never seen anybody like you. And 43 years walking around. Yeah. What the fuck is that all about? Yao Ming? Please. He, CCP didn't make him? 7-2? Chinese guy? Yeah. That doesn't exist. No. Yeah. I've seen a lot of Chinese guys. I haven't seen anybody Chinese with Down syndrome either. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> Where'd they go? I've seen a what? bunch of white kids with their tongues out, but I don't see a lot of fucking <laughs> Asians like that. Never seen it. Nope. Interesting. Now we're touching on some ones that, you know have a little bit more weight than is there a volcano under Yellowstone? Yeah, that was so <laughs> fucking boring. Yeah, that, that's... You got to get into it. It's got to be something going on like that. They can clone people now. Yeah, you can. You can do it. You can pay 25 grand to get your pet cloned. You know that? Yeah. It's not that crazy. You could be like, I love this dog and I know he's going to die. And they'll be like, want another one? Just like him? That. Okay, twenty five grand. It's not that much. That's like choosing like, do you want this fucking Ford Focus or do you want another dog? Yeah, you want, you want Scruffy back? Especially if you can put a down payment and then pay it off. Yeah, yeah, pay the new same dog off. Yeah, will it come back like Cujo or like Pet Cemetery? Probably. It's Maybe. not going to be the same. Same personality. It's got to be evil. You got to get them while the older one's still alive. You like yeah. start, you know, <laughs> start teaching your act like him. All right, yeah. <laughs> that would be creepy right if they just gave you a tom segura to raise fuck yeah dude that would be weird it would uh, not oh man if they're like here they gave it to you and like that's you as a kid and it's you and it's that just would looking be at you you, be, you guys would look at each other tripped out yeah and the thing is he'd be so different yeah he wouldn't be he wouldn't go through any of anything that i went through so right. i would so not like him I, every day i'd be like i fucking hate you man <laughs> <laughs> He'd probably be a better person. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. God damn it. It's creepy stuff. Science is getting creepy. It's getting like weird with the things that they can do. Yeah. It's getting weird. They can like orchestrate viruses and shut the world down. And also, <laughs> that's a big conspiracy that we didn't talk about. No, you're right. Yeah. COVID. Yeah. Was it created? I mean, there's a lot of evidence that points to the fact that this escaped from a lab, right? I think it's pretty... It, and they would ridicule you, uh, especially initially, and, then, and it was... They, they made it... They associated the discussion of the possibility as flat-out racism, xenophobia, like you are being hateful towards the Chinese people for even discussing this. Yeah. And then as time went on they're like well this was generated in this lab yeah <laughs> whether or not it was willfully 
released is what the discussion is. Right. Yeah. I think the Chinese are capable of horrific things. Oh, yeah. You know, just like they're just absolutely down to <laughs> fucking wipe us out. <laughs> they're not fans. <laughs> they're not fans at they're all. They're not fans. And fentanyl yeah. it was originally from China. Let's be honest here. The Chinese are going to be the downfall of America. They're okay? they're coming. They're, they're coming on for the us. come up. Yeah. Yeah. They own the real estate. We're Jordan on the Wizards right now, and they're Kobe. Oh, yeah. It's their time. It's their time, man. Yeah, and you just got to let it happen. Well, Learn. this empire is ready to fall. Yeah, we it's, are. Yeah. I mean, you, you see what I mean, see what some of these candidates look like. You're like, oh, yeah, we're done. Yeah. Jesus. That guy's got a stroke, and that guy's a fake doctor from television, and that's one and of those the most- are, That's supposed to be our best and brightest. That's it. And then you got like Marjorie nobody, Taylor Greene. It's oh really wild. God. Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker. <laughs> they have a fucking runoff now. Yeah. That's- did you see the stats on who voted for who? It's no. so crazy. I think it's all white guys went for Herschel Walker. Yeah, like 89% of eligible Georgia white voters were like, Herschel. Yeah. And then like 92% of black voters in Georgia voted for, what is it, War, what is it, Warlock, Warwick? Warwick? What is his name? I That's the problem I'm because sorry. that other guy's together, Warnock. so I don't know his name. What is it? Warnock. Warnock, Warnock. sorry, Warnock. So black voters chose Warnock, white voters chose Walker. And they literally were like, great running back. Yeah. Uh, I'm a dog, he's a dog, we're dogs for life. Yeah. <laughs> Guy can't string together. Can't put together a sentence. Fucking P, my, my youngest is in PK, pre-kindergarten. <laughs> Speaks more coherently than Herschel Walker. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I swear to God, if you gave them each something to say, I'd be like, "Well, I understand Julian." Like, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like, I mean, the kid was just punting babies off of cliffs. I mean, the amount of abortions he had, he was just fucking. But he's also he's they match his stats. He's <laughs> <laughs> you're like, did he have more rushing yards or he, abortions? He it's it's not you can't understand what he's saying. Yeah, like I literally have seen clips where I'm like, what is he actually saying here? Yeah, he's not. Yeah, CTE's in there. That was back in the day where they just let CTE happen. And the holes in his brain. Mm. I mean, they have. You could drive a truck through the like. There, <laughs> he must have just huge gaps in yeah. there. We're like, oh yeah, cortex is not connected to the frontal. <laughs> like it's like all you, you have. Like they're doing fucking parkour in his in his head. The words are just like <laughs> jumping from one thing to the other. None of it makes sense. No. Have you are you familiar with his son? He's like we. During climate change, see the trees and it's raining outside. Yeah. Going back to COVID. Don't let, like, the, don't let the, the libs fuck win. Did you just say? Yeah, they just goes. Don't, we're not gonna let the libs win. That's yeah, his only point. The yeah. part just going to Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you it's, familiar with his son at all? No. Christian Walker. It's the uh, best. What is he like? So his son is uh, like very hardcore Republican, but really? he's like flamboyantly gay. Awesome. So he's just. And now he hates Herschel. Like Herschel came out. Um, That's him? Yeah. When Herschel was like, I'm pro-life. And then the ladies like, were like, hey, well, what about the 10 abortions you paid for? Yeah. And then he finally came out and he was like, okay, I've had enough. He's like, daddy, you were a shit dad. You had family values. You were never home. My mother was one of a hundred women. And he's just like, it's really funny. But he, he, it's funny because he's so liberal but his talking points are so conservative that it's just fun to watch that. That's hilarious. Just like to hear the right wing talking talking points out of the most left wing voice. He's just up there. How like, many kids does he have? Who knows, dude? Him and Sean Kemp, who knows? Um, okay. Let's see. He has children. That one? It's the only one listed. Huh. The other ones he aborted. That's true. <laughs> okay, children. He married his... They have a son, Christian, a social media influencer. Okay. Uh, in September... Da, 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 uh, okay. Abortion allegations. <laughs> I never asked anyone to get an abortion. I never paid for an abortion, he said. I gave money to people all the time because I'm always helping people. <laughs> That's fucking... <laughs> That's when you're really into politics. Yeah. You become a politician when you start spinning it that way. Um, she had another child with Walker at, years after, the, despite Walker saying that it was not a convenient time for him to have a child, a sentiment he also raised prior to the abortion. 
Yeah. Um, I'm not saying she did or didn't have an abortion. I'm saying I don't know anything about that. Okay. He acknowledged the possibility of Gavin giving his accuser a get well card and a check for other reasons. God damn. If That's you send the best somebody part. a yeah. fucking get well card. He sent her he sent her a get well card. After the abortion? Yeah. And she's uh, saying that was for the abortion. Right. Yeah. Hope you feel better. <laughs> Here's six hundred bucks. Here's six hundred bucks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We, oh I wish God. you well. Yeah. He has spoken publicly about being di diagnosed with disassociative identity disorder. What the fuck is that? <laughs> he dissociates? What is that? What is that disorder? I mean, this is what we're rolling out for Senate now, for man. For the Senate? Senate, yeah. Previously known as multiple personality disorder, <laughs> characterized as the presence of at least two distinct and relatively enduring personality states. Does one of them speak English in this case? <laughs> Holy memory <laughs> gaps. Yeah, that's, that adds up. <laughs> Holy shit. He's a fucking mess, dude. He's a, the, cr the fact that that guy could be... Can you imagine when he takes the floor at the U.S. Senate? And then they're just going to be like, this really has just completely, completely collapsed. It's a parody at this point. Yeah. It's like, it's, uh, you can, it's hard to do comedy now because you, it's, you can't add comedy to comedy. Yeah. It's already funny. Like right. if someone was pitching, this would be a sketch. Right. Like what if Herschel Walker right, like she ran for Senate? Was fun, like it's funnier when the sensible, smart person is in charge because then you get to ridicule. But when like, like that was always the thing about like, you know, people were like, do you do Trump stuff? I was like, no, because like every day this is, this is nonsense. Yeah. He's saying why, you know, he was always, whether you like him or don't like him, you admit that you're like, he's saying wild shit that you can't, what are you going to add to that? Right. Like he's, he's making crazy claims and, you know, saying like, you know, what if we inject you with intraviolet <laughs> UV light yeah. for like, he's just saying crazy shit all the time. Yeah. Like what's the comedy? The comedy is already there. Yeah. He called Nancy Pelosi the last speech he gave, he called her an animal. You're like, you can't. Yeah, yeah dude. What, what am I going to add to that? Yeah. Her, her husband just got uh, hammered. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't driving, but he got hammered. He did get hammered. <laughs> he did. This time, not behind the wheel. He uh, he was like, what is, when he was running, he was like, Ted Cruz's wife, oof, oof, like, dog. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> it's like shit that you're like, oh, this is this guy's career's over. And they're like, no. No. And he, then Ted Cruz was like, I like him. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird, too, Called right? my wife a dog. Yeah. 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 He just insulted the hell out of her and then- like yeah, they people just got on board. You know the, the crazy thing that he ever recovered from, and it, it was just brought back up to me. And I, because I, I remember when it happened, I remember the aftermath, and then it was just like everything else in Trump's political career. It just, everything just keeps going. It just it never stopped. It really was that he shit on McCain, and he was like, I like guys that weren't captured. Right. And right. Like, that's wild. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. that you yeah. you shit on a POW. Yeah. And everybody was like, you can't talk. And then they were like, moving on. Yeah. I feel like everybody else, that would have been just like the end of their, especially in America, where you're like, John McCain was captured and tortured for like and, and also had the opportunity to come back before other POWs. And he refused. And he was offered that because his father was an admiral. And he refused. He's like, no, I'll stay a prisoner of war. And Trump was like, this guy's a fucking loser. Yeah, yeah. And everybody was like, no, no, no. And then he got through that too. Got through it. That's crazy. It is. He's, I don't know what, the, I think maybe it's because he says so many wild things. It is. You but, don't know where to pin him down. But it also is one of those times where you could point to like, this is a true piece of shit comment. And if you're posturing as an American patriot, you're lying. If you continue to say that this is a, a good guy you support, like you're lying. And you, get, you should be called out for it. And people were like, no, no, no. I mean, yeah, a lot of people say crazy things. Like just all this what about is what about when this? And you're like, what? what? He clear, it was like clear as day, like sat there and was like, guy got captured, it's a fucking loser. And you're like, we're going to just roll with that? Okay. You're right. You're right. That would be the one in America you think would take him down. Didn't. Because, and you, the troops is like sacred. Troops here? And shit on that. Especially yeah. to like the the red base. Mm -hmm. Like you don't fucking fuck with the troops. Yeah. The, so he's talking about like a genuine hero. Yeah. And he was like, fuck him. Yeah. I don't like him. 
Why do you get captured? Yeah. What? <laughs> Only losers get captured. It's so crazy. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. It lets you know that it was a little weird how he, it was kind of, he kind of became a cult leader a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like people didn't care what he said. At all. It was just they followed him no matter what. And their thing was, I like that he says, fuck you. Yeah. Like, all right. All right. And what do you think will happen leading into next year now? Like as the campaigns will ramp up. I think he's done. I think he's done too. I think he's done. I think people that don't see that way are, they're not seeing the whole picture. No. Because I think you'll never lose the hardcore, hardcore Trumpers, right? But there are people who are like, well, this is working. Like we're staying in power because of this guy. But they always saw like all the baggage that comes with him that are like, oh no, we need to like just leave. The and I think, I think that he won't be able to gather the same type of support again. No, I think uh, the midterms was a big blow for him because like all except for one or two of his like hardcore election denying endorsed by him candidates, all those gubernatorial candidates, all the governor candidates, yeah. they all lost. Yeah. So I think, and there was no red wave. And I think the, even the GOP knows like, all right, people are rejecting the extremism of him. They're kind of tired of him. It's kind of gotten old now. I think people yeah. are, I think he's done. I think they're on the, the red is on the DeSantis train now. Oh yeah. yeah. Because they realize too, you know, he, he stands for what they believe. It's fine. Like get behind a candidate that you believe in. I, I don't have any problem with it. And he doesn't come with, even though, you know, he's, he's got his own type of brash. He doesn't come with the baggage of this cult of personality type. Who's like, you know, I'm so vindictive. I keep names of anyone that's ever insulted me and, and I'm going to shit on any, you know, everyone and like that, the whole baggage of a guy that's so like not ready for that. Like he's never was ready for that job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like you, you need somebody who's just a little more, not a little more, a lot more sane and polished. And even if you d disagree with all of the, DeSantis policies, I think you're getting at least somebody that knows how to fucking knows act. How, knows how to act, knows yeah. how to talk, won't, you know, won't shit on everyone right. all the time. He'll stand for what he stands for yeah. and you'll hate it or love it. Yeah. But he's not like a, like a, a walking, talking bag of diarrhea. Yeah. Like, a, just like the worst human being that I'd still and who who never hit it that was always the craziest thing it's so transparent yeah. like, i like this guy yeah yeah I'm like what the fuck are you talking about yeah i always imagine what it would be like for the people who supported him like the women who supported him yeah uh because they always just kind of rationalize whatever he did like if he was grabbing i grab women by the pussy they're like hey you know it's just locker room talk yeah and then their husbands come home like cheating on them fucking yeah. hookers on their side yeah but they still have to like rationalize that they sure. like trump they're like that's just what boys do? Guys do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, yeah. so they probably just got tired of doing that. Like people are just kind of like, ah, oh, I can't keep pretending like this is okay. <laughs> His whole thing was like, I like people who like me. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Yeah. Yeah. You're the president of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, Kim Jong un likes me. I like him. I like him. <laughs> if you're a fan of me, he's got good taste. He's you're got, like, this yeah. guy's out of his mind. He's out of his mind. He's a and megalomaniac. How do you not see that? How do you not see it? I have people, that, like friends of mine, who are there like, I really like that guy. I'm like, what do you like? I don't know. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, you know, he's entertaining. He's rich. That's the other one. When people go, he's rich. And you're like, that's what you like? Yeah. And the media loves him. Even when they hate him, they loved him. Well, he's great. And Freaks. I think he, yeah. part of that popularity is because of the trolling. And he's a car crash. And everyone slows down for a car crash. And People, I think, in part liked him for the same reason we couldn't think of the other guy's name who Herschel Walker was running against. Right, right, exactly. You know? You're it's, totally right. Yeah. And I think it's also, you know, the fucked up thing was like, we, um, like if you can really strip away all the qualities, he really fueled divide. Like he's incapable of actual unifying. Like there's some leaders go like, I'll put this aside. I won't do this. I won't say this. I really want us to come. And I don't think he has an ounce of that in him and is completely incapable of ever bringing people together, which ultimately at some point you need a president that at least has the capacity to attempt to do that. 
completely incapable. Yeah. There's no way he would ever bring any group of people together. What he I brings know. together are the people that are just like him and celebrate. And also the fucking sideshow of having an active president do uh, events, like arena events, as you're like, I'm going to be in Montana tonight, just doing a gig. <laughs> what? Go back to D.C., bro. Right. And he's just sitting there, like, giving speeches. Like, what the fuck are you doing? He's a performer. Yeah. He's a performer. The, the media, Hollywood, they made him. That's the irony of it. Yeah. They hate him, but they made him. They really did make him. We're having he, a rally today. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? You're already in. You're in. You won already. They're like, he likes it. Likes it feels the good. Yeah. It feels good. People cheer. Yeah. He went too far. He bit off more than he can chew. He miscalculated. Um, also when he attacked DeSantis, I think the Republicans turned, because he told DeSantis, he's like, he better stay. He threatened him. Yeah. He put it out there. He's so wild. He he's goes wild. like, if it wouldn't be good for him if he if he runs. He's going to run. Yeah. He's, he's like, going to beat you too. I know some stuff. He was like black man. He was like, I yeah. know some stuff. Yeah. That would be bad to get out there. He's going to lose. And he's going to once again claim, even in this case, that it's fraud. Yeah. 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 He's just a wrecking ball. Yeah. He's like a hurricane. This, that will be fun to watch though. I'll admit that, Th that be between him and DeSantis. Oh yeah, and yeah, it'll, and it'll be, be fun. fun to watch him not just lose, but go like all fake, all yeah. all these votes were wrong. Yeah. DeSantis is a piece of shit. Yeah, I fucked his wife. Yeah. I don't give a fuck, you know. Like, he'll <laughs> yeah. say some crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, he is shameless in what he'll say. He'll go anywhere, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. he'll go anywhere. Yeah. He started with the Obama's a Muslim thing. That's how he got in the game. Yeah, that's what got him in the game. Birth you know, certificate. He was the birth. He guy. was the. He was going around hawking it on all the talk shows, and they had him on, and everyone yeah. was fucking talking about his ties. Yeah. He was on Letterman, and and he was hawking that. He was like he currently was. hawking that. And then when I think it was when he became the candidate, they were like, "Will you?" And he's like, "All right, it's real." <laughs> It's a, I guess it's real. Yeah. Like that was the most he would give them. Yeah. They're yeah. like, could you stop pushing yeah. this narrative? And yeah. he was like, I, I mean, I looked into it. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I guy's mean, got a weird fucking name yeah. to begin with. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that should have been a red flag when he was hawking that and just hawking yeah. that. And you're like, what's the details? You're like, it's real. I'm yeah. saying it. Look yeah. at his name. Yeah. Look at his name. Hussein. It's Hussein. real. Hussein. His dad's in name. Kenya, a dad born there, you know? Yeah. You're like, his mom's from Kansas. Don't focus on that. Yeah. He's a Muslim. He's Muslim. He just wears Black. Went. Yeah. It's a bunch of things we don't like. We should, like, you just got to know it's going to keep going. Like yeah. with Kanye, when he goes, slavery's a choice, you're like, that's not all he's going to have to say. Yeah, it's not There's over There's more here. coming down the barrel. Yeah. Yeah. Except we made one of those guys the president. The pres, yeah. Yeah. That's Kanye's so not going to stop either. He's going to keep going. Yeah. He's going to... Do you remember that time that Kanye went to the White House and he sat with Trump and the whole press corps was there and Kanye just had like a bipolar <laughs> manic rant and like he I mean he was saying wow and then Trump just sat there and watched it and he was like wow <laughs> he was like this guy's this guy's great <laughs> yeah. huh yeah you believe this guy yeah. <laughs> yeah. such a cool guy yeah he yeah. likes me I like him I like yeah. him yeah I like Kept him saying he, likes he likes me, me. yeah that's he, the criteria yeah. That's how it goes. Jesus Christ. It's become a real, it's, it's, it's a circus, man. It's a real circus. Yeah. The Dr. Oz Fetterman run, I was like, what is going on? I guess this is what happens with like, um, when you're, you know, a lot of people don't, maybe don't know how successful you become when you have a daytime talk show like his. Like he has hundreds of millions of dollars. And the only thing I can think is that maybe at that level, you just get bored doing that. Like, hey, guess what? Your show's still on. You made $76 million this year. And he's just like, I did that the last 20 years. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's why, you know, he goes, I want to be governor. Yeah. Because he's really eyeballing something else, you know? It's like, I don't know why the fuck he would want to get into that other than the fact that they're bored. That's the only thing that makes sense. Because it's he doesn't so need the money. much better. No, yeah. you don't need money. And you're not going to make more money. You're yeah. going to make less money. Yeah. You can, but like having real power is, I guess, what makes your dick hard at that point. You're like, yeah. well, I can buy everything, but. Now I need the power. The now power. Another aphrodisiac. Yeah. Another, uh, yeah, elixir. Yeah. It's got to be it. That's the only reason. Because the, the reason why people do get in is to get rich. Yeah. Like the post, they, yeah, yeah, post, yeah, yeah. That's always funny, right? You see their salary, and then you're like, "Hey, 
Where yeah. did 300 mil come from? Oh my God. Clintons, did you sign with the Lakers when you were in office? The Clintons <laughs> have made so, and, and the Bush, like Nancy you, Pelosi you're making your, like oh yeah, but I mean, these, these post presidencies are insane. Yeah. That you just get so, like, everybody's just like, you want in on this? Yeah. Also, would you like to give a speech? Yeah. It's 500 grand yeah. <laughs> for you to talk about what, what it was like to be president. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I was president, it was pretty wild. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's fucking, that's, you get 500 grand for that shit. Big time. They do a series, write a book. Here's a $15 million advance. And they're not giving you that money to curry favor. They're doing it because they really, really want to hear wanna... what you have to say. Yeah. They want to hear what Hillary, Hillary you know, we got to regulate Wall Street. And then you look at her tour schedule. She's like, Bear Stearns, yeah. J.P. Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> You're going, that's weird. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's a fun one, by the way. When you talk about conspiracy theories, yeah. the most fun one, I think, is the Clinton family stuff. Like, and, and fun. Because there's a lot of... There it's are, like a six degrees of separation, but six degrees of death with death. Hillary Clinton. Yeah. So many people that are like associated, former employees, colleagues, they're like, dead, dead, dead. Yeah. <laughs> then, uh, what is it? Clinton Road... Epstein's playing like I don't know half a dozen times or he, more. I think he was the pilot of it at yeah. one point. Yeah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> I think he, he was, was driving it. He was always yeah, on that. He thing. was fucking on that thing. Dude. And they're like asking about Epstein. He was like, yeah. yeah. I mean, he was like a gold Finance. tier. We talking about money? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. He was like a gold medallion, like frequent flyer. Frequent he flyer. Had a yeah. lot of miles on that plane. What'd you do when you got to that island? I ah, we golfed. The beach. It's yeah, a beach. Golf. You've been to an island? Oh yeah, great. Golf. Yeah. We golfed on that tiny little uh, uh, secret island. The amount of people that have died that were close to them. It is, it's like a, have you, look, look up Clinton body count. Yeah. It's, it's a little weird. It is a little weird. It's, it's a little weird. It is a fun one. I would get into, <laughs> it's got his own Wikipedia. <laughs> is they, oh, it's a discredited conspiracy theory. Excuse mm -hmm. me, please. Sorry for you. Alleged victims. There's. Former finance co-chairman, uh, Victor Razor. Mary Mohan, White House intern. Didn't want to suck it, dead. <laughs> uh, Vince Foster. Vince Foster course. was a big one. Big one. That Deputy was a White big. House uh, counsel. Found dead in Fort Marcy Park in Virginia outside Washington. Autopsy determined he was shot in the mouth. His death was ruled a suicide by five official Investigations, but remains the subject of conspiracy theories um, for knowing too much about the Clintons. Seth Rich, everybody knows Seth Rich. Mm -hmm. uh, unsolved murder, still. Jeffrey Epstein, um, we talked about him. Christopher Sign broke the news of a meeting. Oh, man, this was, this was huge and was um, thought to greatly sway the election oh, yeah. in 16. This is when... Uh, Clinton met with then Attorney General Loretta Lynch, um, and it was like it was so it was like oh, we're on the tarmac. Hey, why don't you like pull that plane back up for a second? <laughs> I want to have a quick chat. Yeah. Um, and Sign was found dead in his Alabama home. His death wasn't being investigated as a suicide. <laughs> um, a lot but, of people uh, just happen to get depressed. Around a lot the of people get the, depressed, man. Uh, <laughs> Jovenel Moise. Haitian president was assassinated when gunmen attacked his residence. Why is that? Some theorists complain that Clintons were involved in his death, pointing to political controversies re regarding giving aid to Haiti by the Clinton Foundation. Uh, and then there are others. Yeah. Jim McDougal, JFK Jr. JFK really? Jr. was a big one because she was going to run for Senate. She was running for Senate ah, and he was going to run for Senate. He would have clearly won. Okay. You know? She mo she she like came to New York. She's not from there. She put a baseball cap on, and, and she's, she's like, like, "I'm running here. Uh, let, why don't you uh, rewire his plane, real, his Cessna, real quick? Yeah, right before he takes his <laughs> flight." Uh, Edward Eugene Wiley, wife, uh, alleged on 60 Minutes that Clinton sexually assaulted her. Dead. Uh, Ron Brown served as Secretary of Commerce prior to his. Blah, blah, blah. He and 34 others died in a massive uh, plane crash. Jerry Parks. Jesus, Mark Middleton. There's a lot of people. He was head of security. And then some guy here sent an email to fucking uh, Clinton. He's dead. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of people, dude. Yeah. Wait, but this one is weird, right? Jerry Parks. He's the head of security for the Clinton headquarters during the campaign. He was killed uh, as he left a Mexican restaurant at the edge of Little Rock, Arkansas, by a man in another car that shot him 10 times 
using a nine millimeter gun. Like what for what? Yeah, that's a did, lot. Did that's they, really unloading on someone. Yeah, that's really. Park's son Gary asserted that his father collected a secret file of Clinton's. What is it? Peccadillos. Peccadillos, and that his father was using the file to try to blackmail the Clinton campaign. Well, that works. That works. Yeah, that, yeah works. that works. Otherwise, like, why would a guy just roll up and shoot him ten times? Like, I shot ten from my nine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man, you got it. I mean, ten is fucking really unloading. I like how people those start to like attribute other deaths that yeah. like clearly They're weren't. Like, Here's other people that yeah. Anthony Bourdain, yeah. Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking what? <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> Some bus driver named Sal. Uh, they just throw anything in there. Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> she was Elizabeth. like, Clinton tried to fuck me. <laughs> it is okay. weird. It's a it little is, weird. It is it's weird. It's a, a fun round. one. Yeah. It's a fun one. And uh, I wouldn't mind if you guys take it for a spin, kind of liven it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll start talking about it. Uh, well, Jesus. Um, dude, thank you for coming. Always fun to have you here, man. Thanks. If uh, If I get killed after this or you... We know who we know it could who to talk be. To. Hey, Bill, <laughs> what did you do to Giannis? <laughs> <sighs> no, thanks for having me, man. It was uh, yeah. a lot of fun. Always yeah. fun. Always yeah. fun. Make sure you check out uh, your podcast every, what day is it drop? Every Saturday, uh, Long Days with Giannis. Um, my tour date's uh, GiannisPappasComedy.com. Tons of dates up there. Please go check them out. And you have the Patreon, too. Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. There you go. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave